event comes to you from the Caesars Superdome, home to the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. It's the first meeting between future Sun Belt opponents, Marshall and Louisiana. The Thundering Herd is set to join the Sun Belt Conference in the near future. And good evening, Anish Roth alongside Mike Golick Jr. Taylor McGregor is down on the field. It has been a whirlwind couple of weeks for Louisiana. This has been a banner season. They're in the program's high renaissance, but Billy Napier, their head coach, left to take the Florida job. He took four of his assistants with him. He did not take Levi Lewis, though, the sixth-year quarterback who's been a part of 37 wins in his career. Yeah, when you're going through all this change, you look for continuity, and thankfully, they have that at the most important position. And this is run and pass where Levi Lewis can affect the game. He's already passed Jake DeLome for the school's all-time leader in touchdown passes. But Anish, we're going to see him as a viable part of this rushing attack all night. And extending plays for the downfield passing game is where he really shines. Now Lewis with a chance to break another record tonight. And their star power on that Marshall sideline as well. Rasheen Ali has put together a banner season. Uh, unbelievable. Leads the nation with 20 rushing touchdowns. But Anishi's also got 45 receptions on the year. You're going to see him all over the field. And when this young stud gets in space, I'll start to say a few prayers for the defenders that are standing in front trying to tackle him. A boxing background for Ali to match the surname as we go down to Taylor McGregor. Thanks so much, Anish. Coach, your first game as the head coach of your dream school. Describe what you're feeling. It's a great feeling, you know, to get to run out with these guys, a group that's done so much, you know, makes you proud to be a part of it. Nervous at all? Nah, I believe in them. They'll be ready. Anish? Thank you, Taylor. That's Michael Desermo, head coach for Louisiana, promoted to head coach when Napier left. And you've got Charles Huff, first-year head coach at Marshall, spent the last two with Nick Saban at Alabama. We talked about Ali. You've got a head coach who has churned out some pretty good running backs, and that's his specialty. It's been amazing. And we talked about Saquon Barkley, a guy that he knows pretty well from his time coaching with Penn State. Said Ali reminds him a lot of him in the fact that both of these guys, so humble, didn't exactly know how great they're capable of being. That's going to be the challenge for Coach Dez and Louisiana on the other side. Try and slow down that dynamic rusher. Marshall wins the toss. The thundering her to defer. So Louisiana will receive. This is a Ragin' Cajuns team that is 12-1. They can put an exclamation point tonight on the greatest season in school history. Already Sunbelt Conference champions. Marshall looking for its first bowl win since 2018. 12-4 all-time in bowls. And that 7-5 record for Marshall, a little deceiving. Four of those five losses by one score. Yep, lost two of the final three down the stretch, but Anish, we talk about this all the time. The bowl game can be a springboard into next season and a chance to go out on a positive note here and start your offseason for year two under Coach Huff the way you want. The Louisiana coach is telling us now there's some injuries and there's some missing pieces for Louisiana. We'll get into that. No opt-outs, though. So many of these kids from the state of Louisiana to play in the Superdome is a dream come true for so many. It's where they play the high school state championship, and if they didn't have that opportunity, this guy's first crack at it tonight here in the Dome. Andrew Sanders to send it away for Marshall. No Chris Smith, an All-American return man a season ago for Louisiana. And that is Imani Bailey returning the kick out to the 19-yard line. And we get a first look at this Ragin' Cajuns offense. Lewis, the sixth-year senior, most touchdown passes in school history and a chance tonight to break Jake DeLome's career record for passing yards. He was also the MVP of the Sun Belt Championship game. We mentioned he's a huge element in this offense, his ability to operate in the running game, both as the guy operating the RPOs, keeping the ball and carrying it, but Anishi takes great care of the football, 19 touchdowns against just four interceptions this season. Amani Bailey, who has been the bell cow down the stretch, begins in the backfield. Lewis will keep it looking for the edge, and there's a big gainer. Driven out by Nazi Johnson, the safety. He can do it with his feet. He has really improved his deep ball over the last couple of years. 284 is the magic number for him through the air tonight. When we talked to their coaching staff, they said 
We felt like this offseason, when we looked at ourselves, we'd been scheming guys open on the deep balls. Quarterback's done a great job of hitting them this season. He'll be without a couple of big weapons. Chris Smith, the leading rusher, is out. He's got an injury. And also out, Peter LeBlanc, who is their top wide receiver, as Bailey picks up about five. They like to spread it out to the receivers. LeBlanc's got the best numbers, but it is a gestalt approach, the sum greater than the parts. Yep, six players with at least 15 receptions and 200 yards. And that's why the quarterback is so important. He's got to be a great decision maker. We'll talk about all the shifts, all the motions for this team tonight. You need that veteran presence at the helm. On second and five, Lewis rolling to his left, throws back over the middle, and he's got Errol Rodgers for a first down. Second-year freshman from Lafayette, three-time state champion quarterback in high school himself. And we're starting to see them give Marshall a little taste of their own medicine. Marshall loves to go tempo on their offense. Louisiana getting ready to hurry up. On first down, quick screen, far sideline. And another nice game. That's John Stevens, the TCU transfer. This Louisiana offense, it really starts up front, and they're missing a big piece on that O-line. Right tackle Max Mitchell is out. He was an All-American. So Ken Marks, who has started 40-plus games, moves over from left tackle to right tackle. And Nathan Thomas, a highly regarded redshirt freshman, makes his first career start at left tackle. Play action. Lewis has time. Well covered. Incomplete. Broken up. Intended target was Kyron Lacey and Stephen Gilmore, the younger brother of Stephon Gilmore, with the PBU. And you can see some of the same ball skills here. Really fluid athlete, long at 6'2", and does a great job of timing that break on the football and getting a hand in there. But now here, third and short. And this is where you expect, once again, Levi Lewis and his legs to be able to affect the defense, give you some options here on a great third and short. Bailey, the running back, out of the pistol. Meagle, the tight end in motion. Lewis to Bailey, out of the backfield, and he's got a first down. Amani Bailey in that Sunbelt Conference championship game. A career-high 117 yards on the ground. That's his 14th catch of the season. I think this is one thing Louisiana does really well. You see a lot of these bootlegs for quarterbacks where normally it's a tight end going back into the flat. They like to mix it up, involve their running backs in that element, and it allows the timing to go just that much faster, get the defense off balance. Lewis keeps it, evading the pressure, and turns that into positive yards. And checking in at running back for Louisiana, Montrell Johnson, freshman of the year in the Sun Belt, played his high school ball at De La Salle, 10 minutes down the road, a New Orleans native coming home. Leads the team with 11 rushing touchdowns. He's been the finisher on this squad, and with Chris Smith out tonight again, going to be carrying the load, but he's ready for it. It's going to be Johnson and Bailey getting the bulk of the carries. And here is Johnson. All the way to the 30, setting up third and short. Taylor? Montrell Johnson, a special moment for him, getting to play in New Orleans in front of friends and family for the first time in his collegiate career. His mom, Keyshawn Harris, is in attendance, and he said it means the world to him for her to be able to see his first collegiate game back in New Orleans. Playing in this building means so much to so many of these Louisiana players. And there's Johnson again, thundering inside the 25 as Louisiana just a few yards away from a red zone opportunity. Yeah, when we talked to the staff, they mentioned that these guys, their Friday walkthrough, they were jacked up to be in here. They were taking pictures. They were looking around as we see everyone looking around trying to take down Montrell Johnson. But it, it, that's the moment where you're reminded. Not only are these guys all kids taking in the bowl environment, even though we're told these bowls don't matter. Right. They get to be back in a place that means so much growing up down here, and that's been palpable this week for them. Johnson, the setback in the pistol. Caleb Carter in motion. They'll feed Montrell again, and that time, turn back. Abraham Boplin, team leader in tackles for Marshall, number seven. Second season with the Thundering Herd coming over from Navarro College. You can hear him when he goes to work out there. You heard the pads pop on that hit. Anish, when you turn on Marshall on defense, one player moves at a different speed than the rest. 
And it's Boplin. He's been remarkable for them this season. First team all-conference USA, a downhill striker. Lewis rolls to his left, has an open receiver. It's Bailey in the flat. First down and more. First and goal, Louisiana. Gilmore finally brought him down. Marshall up front. It's important to note they're down three defensive linemen. They rotate a lot up front, but they're down some key pieces. And when we talked to Lance Gidry, the defensive coordinator, he mentioned eye discipline when you go up against an offense that wants to shift and move this much. We've already seen now twice Louisiana take advantage of that, rolling their quarterback, Levi Lewis, back to the boundary for easy completions. Now the two big losses up front for Marshall, Jamari Edwards, who's in the transfer portal, and Sam Burton, who suffered a season-ending injury last time out. Nothing going. Owen Porter blew that play up in the backfield. Second and goal. And Owen Porter, you saw down there at three technique. He's 6'3", 232. This is a Marshall defensive line, shorthanded and made up mostly of small, undersized defensive end bodies. That's going to be a big challenge. This is a big, bruising, physical unit for Louisiana up front. And this is a long drive now. Those legs starting to get heavy. And there's only so much you can rotate before you got to an answer down in this area. Johnson and Lumpkin, the tight end, motion out to the left. Lewis, quarterback keeper. Now he'll throw wide open. Touchdown, Kyron Lacey. Misdirection, quarterback rolling out. The key to this entire drive, Anish, an outstanding job here of Levi Lewis, just constantly in control, rolling out, keeps his eyes downfield, and the ability for him, that's a veteran player on a rollout to be able to process, hey, I got a guy coming from backside, I got to be patient and deliver an on-time strike. Nate Snyder, the Indiana transfer, connects on the extra point. 13 plays, 81 yards, 5 minutes and 34 seconds. An impressive opening statement by Louisiana. And now Marshall is going to have to get their chance on offense. And coming into this, we knew Louisiana's rushing offense going up against Marshall on defense. That was going to be a mismatch. Now for, Car for Coach Huff and company, you got an offense that's built to put up big plays, and you're going to have to respond early in this game. Now, Kyron Lacey, uh, he's got the chain. He's got the lock and everything. Kyron Lacey, you get down low there. They've got big bodies to go they through at the receiving core. Kyron Lacey, 6'3", 213. We mentioned John Stevens, 6'5", 222. Michael Jefferson, 6'3". When they get down into the low red zone, Levi Lewis is looking for those guys every single time. Lacey, a season ago, as a true freshman, was the team's top receiver. Snyder to kick it away to Jaden Harrison. Harrison from the nine, fair catch, and it'll be Marshall Ball at the 25. The quarterback for the Thundering Herd needs an updated headshot. It's Grant Wells, third-year redshirt freshman. He's got a mustache now to the chagrin of his head coach, Charles Huff. Yeah, the All-American headshot and a mustache that shows maybe he's hiding a little something underneath there, but... Uh, Anish, he's been a great quarterback at the helm for Coach Huff's offense. One that's not going to hone in on any one player. This is about getting the ball to the open receiver and spreading it far and wide for some of the big plays we've seen all year. And he's got Rasheen Ali, 1,200-plus yards as his running back, lined up in the pistol. Flea flicker to start, and Wells goes down. And wish you could give credit to someone on Louisiana. That's a turf monster crept up and bit him right there. Love the aggressive call for the first play. Just unfortunate footing. You know, we had people doing yoga on the field this morning. People were uh, running around as well. They had, what, a two-mile run that we took part in. So I was going to say, know, people, you fault? mean us. Yes. Down there getting the turf warmed up. Wells to Ali, who's been such a great receiver this year. That's his 46th reception. The school record is 56 by Ahmad Bradshaw. Most catches in a season. 
he's been sensational. Him stressing the perimeter. He's not a home run hitter speed-wise. It's not track speed, but it's enough to really get a defense off balance and set up some great cutbacks we've seen. Third and 12 against a Louisiana defense that ranked 11th nationally in scoring D. Manak jumped early. Free play. Wells launching downfield too far for Chris Gamage, Corey Gamage, their top receiver. Offsides, number 17 in the defense. Five-yard penalty, remains third down. Grant Wells last time out against Western Kentucky in the regular season finale, suffered a concussion, had to leave the game, and uh, it was a shame. They were up 14-0. He had completed his first 10 passes. He goes out in a game that decided who would play for the Conference USA Championship, and then the Hilltoppers scored 36 unanswered and essentially put the game away. Third down, a little more manageable. Incomplete. Great coverage there by Makai Garner. This is a Louisiana defense that is down two starters, but if you count those two, they had nine all-conference selections, including Garner. It's a lights-out group there, and again, just in the right place, right time. Doesn't even look back, but he's in such great position. The ball bounces right off him, and a quick three and out now. And a great chance for Louisiana to continue to wear down a martial defense that just spent a long time on the field. Robert Lefevre punts it away. This is Eric Guerrero. And he's taken down at the 35-yard line. Second drive now for Louisiana. You heard Taylor talk to... Michael Desormo, that's the pronunciation. You've heard it a number of different ways, Desormo, but it's Desormo. Former quarterback at Louisiana, now at the helm of his alma mater. He actually broke Jake DeLome's single-season school record for passing efficiency while he was there. Was originally with Mark Hudspeth. Billy Napier retained him. And Desermo this season was the co-offensive coordinator. Now he'll be calling the play, something Billy Napier did. Lewis under pressure, and down he goes. T.J. Johnson, the sack. This is a martial defense that can get after the quarterback. 38 sacks entering play, and Lewis has to exit. His helmet came off, so by rule, he's to the sideline for one play. And remember, we mentioned Ken Mark sliding over to right tackle, normally on the left side this season since Max Mitchell out of the game. We welcome you to the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl from the Caesars Superdome. Anish Shroff, Mike Golick Jr., Taylor McGregor down in the field. 7-0 Raging Cajuns. Chandler Fields in at quarterback just for this play. And he's got Dante Fleming on the previous play. Levi Lewis, the sixth-year senior, record-breaking quarterback for the Raging Cajuns, had to exit because his helmet came off. Second to drive for Louisiana. 13 plays, 80-plus yards on the opening drive. It ended with a Kyron Lacey touchdown. And this is a Ragin' Cajuns team, of course, with a new head coach, Michael Desermo, taking over for Billy Napier and looking to put punctuation on the greatest season in school history. Lewis over the middle, contested throw, and it's brought in. That's John Stevens, his second catch. A first down for the Ragin' Cajuns. Stevens, we talked about that big body, 6'5", over 220 pounds, just able to shield the football from the defender. Great job working through the top of that. Levi Lewis, patience in the pocket. Montrell Johnson, the New Orleans native, up the gut for a gain of three. Some missing pieces for Louisiana on both sides of the ball, but on the offense, their All-American right tackle, Max Mitchell, is out. So the veteran Ken Marks moves from left tackle to right tackle. Nathan Stevens makes his first career start at left tackle. Chris Smith, leading rusher, is out. Peter LeBlanc, the top wide receiver, is out. All these are injuries. 
no opt-outs and on defense two key players in that front seven Humphrey and Gardner also out a lot of guys battling through some a, a, you know, lagging injuries all year long getting a chance to sit get ready for the next step the give is to Johnson the defense went for Lewis and he picks up about two more into Marshall territory it sets up a third down Louisiana right here this could be four down territory so a run is very much on the table absolutely when we talked to Tim Leger their offensive coordinator he said once we got that analytics book all of a sudden third down statistics really stopped mattering as much it's about conversion downs now they tend to combine third and fourth down productivity so at the end of the game you may be two for 11 on third down but if you're five for 11 or six for 11 overall we're in great place oh, so you're saying we need some context for stats how about that Lewis to the outside. It's caught by Fleming. And a first down for the Ragin' Cajuns. One of the interesting chess matches tonight will be Tim Leger, the offensive coordinator for Louisiana, against Lance Guidry, the defensive coordinator for Marshall. Those two know each other real well. Both McNeese guys. They coach together at McNeese. They talk often. As Fleming is tripped up at the 41 yard line well when we saw in that last play they got man coverage and we talked to tim leger about it and he said his son was actually with him he said dad you know lance is going to play man on you and try to strap you guys up right he had his own son talking smack to him in the week leading up to this game there's no loyalty at home not that i would know anything about that i want to be a fly on the wall for your christmas dinner Lewis, another screen pass to the outside. And that's Caleb Carter as we check in with Taylor. Tim Leger called Lance Guidry the most competitive guy he's ever met. He said when they were coaching together, he was the type of guy who would leave his office and they would both be in the hallway at the same time and he would just walk faster because he wanted to get to the meeting before him. That is the kind of guy he is. Everything is a competition. Like the Golic household. Except with a lot more pie, I'd imagine, in our house. Amani Bailey plunges ahead and appears to have the first down. Well, I saw what you did to the cinnamon roll that we had this morning that weighed about five pounds. Taylor and I had a couple of bites, and uh, you scarfed down pretty much 75% of it. Went to Hertz Donuts and called ISOs. We've got fourth down here, and again, Louisiana. No rush. They're going to get up here. We see the motion before the snap, but expect to dive up the middle. And we get a flag. Delay a game, number 92 the defense, interfering with the offensive signal. Five-yard penalty, first down. And that is a free first down. We've seen that called a lot this year. That's Rodney Kroom, the guilty party. Yeah, officials have been made aware. Listen, any, any attempt by the opposing team to mimic the snap count, to do anything to try and you know, get these guys to jump off guard, it's just the way if you have an offensive player who flinches too much before the snap, so... Great call against those D linemen always trying to do something like that. Out of a two tight end set, Fleming in motion. Here's Johnson. Powers to the 25 yard line. You'll see Louisiana go for it. That has been their MO. The one weakness with this team this year has been the kicking game. Part of that is due to injury. Kenny Almondaris, their starting kicker, suffered a season ending hip injury in September. Nate Snyder has been inconsistent at best, and so uh, they get into third and seven, third and eight. They're thinking four down territory. And especially when you get down here, you've got the advantage of if you don't convert, you flip field position in a major way. You give Marshall a long field. That's got to be part of the equation when we talk about these decisions. Fleming, the motion man. Montrell Johnson into a sea of green, no gain. And it sets up third down. And again, the coaches were very clear. Hey, we're in third down, and you got six, you got five to go. 
we will think about running the football because we've got two plays in the holster. Especially if you maybe get a light box look from the defense who's thinking pass in normal situations here. But Anish, the way this has gone tonight for Louisiana already, Marshall's going to have to start loading up extra guys in the box and just dominating time of possession at almost 11, almost 12 minutes for Louisiana so far. Lewis, 9 out of 10 passing, going downfield incomplete. And it'll bring up fourth down. No movement on that Louisiana sideline right now. Uh, that tells you all you need to know about the faith or lack thereof in the kicking game. Well, and they're getting and ready now to run they come out. They had to think about it for a little while. A little bit. You're right on that verge, though. Comfortable with it in this spot. Fourth and six is a tough ask for the offense here after the no gain in the last play. I like this call. Snyder from beyond 40 in his career, just three out of seven. 42, indoors, no elements. The kick is up and good. So Snyder connects. Louisiana has had the ball for more than 12 minutes in this opening quarter. And they've got a two score lead. The Arendelle Carriers New Orleans Bowl is brought to you by Arendelle Carriers. We ship anything, anywhere, anytime. You're watching the Arendelle Carriers New Orleans Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. Anish Shroff, Mike Olick Jr., Taylor McGregor with you. Louisiana, 25-3 to play advantage. They've had the ball for 12.09. Marshall just 122, and it's 10-0 Ragin' Cajuns. Louisiana winners of 12 straight. Only Cincinnati has a longer active win streak at 13. And Marshall will have the ball at the 25-yard line. They went three and out the first time. We'll see if Rasheen Ali and Grant Wells can move the football for this thundering herd offense on the other side. Let's take a look at our drive recap brought to you by Verbo. It's been all Levi Lewis in Louisiana so far in this game. And getting Lewis out of the pocket off of this run game. They run so much outside zone that now the defense has to commit. And they've been able to go to that backside and allow Levi Lewis to hold defense with his legs, get them in the end zone early. Kyron Lacey, the first touchdown for Louisiana to punctuate a 13-play drive. Then Louisiana went 12 plays and kicked a field goal. Marshall about to have the ball for the second time. There's Charles Huff. Their first year head coach. It was a bit of a surprise in the offseason. Doc Holliday out after 11 years. Last year, he was the Conference USA Coach of the Year, fired by the university president. Marshall 7 and 3 in a COVID year. But by all accounts, the Huff hire has been a home run coming over from that Nick Saban coaching tree at Alabama the last two years. He was with James Franklin at Penn State, he was at Mississippi State. And he's got a running back he can shape and mold in Rasheen Ali, who's in the backfield with Grant Wells. And here is Ali. Pretzels his way across the 35 for a gain of a dozen. 1,200 plus yards, first team all conference USA. And you see him getting the defense to lean, starts outside and just puts his foot in the ground. He's so fluid in the open field. And now Marshall can use a little tempo. Wells over the middle, incomplete for Willie Johnson. We only have one bowl game on the schedule for Monday. Old Dominion went full Lazarus, started one and six, won its last five to become bowl eligible. Tulsa, three and six to start, won three straight to become bowl eligible. Those two play in the Myrtle Beach Bowl, so get Marty and McGee back on the sidelines. How about Ali? Breaks it loose. It's a foot race. Rashid Ali, touchdown, 63 yards. His 21st rushing touchdown of the season. 
When he gets to the open field, we told you it's a track meet. Watch Alex Millette, his center number 55, getting to the second level, does an outstanding job. The timing on this play cuts right off and makes his lineman right. And then you're always going to be late trying to catch him in the open field faster than you think. Shane Chucci will attempt the PAT. And Chucci has now made 75 straight PATs. Ali Boumaye, a boxer growing up all the way until he was in high school. He's got the feet of a boxer, and that time he flew in for a TD. Rasheen Ali gets Marshall on the board as Louisiana leads 10 to 7. Rasheen Ali is certainly making the noise in the football war world as he just scored his 21st rushing touchdown of the year. But boxing, actually his first sport. His dad was a huge boxing fan growing up, and so he got Rasheen into the sport at a really early age. And Rasheen credits his footwork in mindset to boxing. He told me that it, the sport really taught him discipline because when you're in the cage and somebody's coming to you right in the moment when you want to panic the most is the moment you need to be locked in the most. And that's certainly translated to the football field. A near disaster there. Amani Bailey, though, able to cover it up for Louisiana. You watch the touchdown and you watch the feet. He has the boxer feet as they say. And, and the ability to cut at full speed the way he does, when he's hitting the hole, it's so hard. And so as a defender, you see safety's trying to come from force late, and he's there so much faster than you anticipate. Because again, and I don't want to heap this on him, but when you watch Reggie Bush back in the day, that was the defining characteristic for him, the ability to cut so well at full speed. Because let's just keep throwing great former running back names at Rasheen Ali as if there's not enough pressure on him. No pressure, TJ Wisham. <laughs> is the running back for Louisiana. And Wisham gobbled up in the backfield. The only negative on that Marshall touchdown, maybe they scored a little too quickly because you look at time of possession, Louisiana has had two long drives. Marshall's had the ball for two minutes and a second. We mentioned, too, down three D linemen going into this game, so you don't have as many bodies in that rotation. Marshall's going to have to sell out committing extra bodies up near the line of scrimmage to stop the run, which means Levi's going to have to beat him deep here soon. Lewis on the quick out completes. He's now 10 out of 12. Catch made by Michael Jefferson, the Alabama State transfer. He's been their big play guy this year, second on the team in receiving yards. And we come to the end of quarter number one. Louisiana has had it for almost the entire quarter, almost 13 minutes. But we saw the explosiveness of Rasheen Ali. Back to Capital One Bowl Mania. Well, welcome to the Caesars Superdome. RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl start of the second quarter. Louisiana back on offense. Third down, four to go for Levi Lewis and company going right to left. Ragin' Cajuns have scored on their first two drives. Lewis under pressure, gets rid of it, able to complete, no, incomplete. Lacey could not hold on. The defenseman, uh, Micah Abraham, son of Donnie Abraham, draped all over him. And Louisiana will have to punt. We mentioned the pass rush for Marshall coming in 12th in the country in sacks with 38, but it's the pressure they get on quarterbacks. You saw multiple bodies in that backfield harassing Levi Lewis, speeding up the clock for him. Two return men, Johnson and Keaton for Marshall and Reese Burns. First team all Sun Belt punter, 23-year-old Australian descended away. Keaton. Stopped in his tracks to the studio and Matt Berry. All right, thank you, Matt. We just had some extracurriculars between 
A couple of teams that will be playing in the same league shortly. Percy Butler getting involved for Louisiana. And not happy. Special teams plays, Anish, have a unique way of bringing out that. It's such high effort shots. A lot of these guys now, Butler, a normal starter on defense, but just losing his cool in front of the home crowd here. These two teams will play in the Sun Belt in the near future, no later than the 2023 season. Marshall, now one of four teams to join the Sun Belt in the latest round of realignment. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number nine in Louisiana, 15-yard penalty, first down. And so that will give Marshall its best starting field position of the evening. Correction. The thundering herd of only nine one Louisiana. six plays, one of them a 63-yard touchdown run by Rasheen Ali, and here's what happened. Yep, he was the double-team guy, and so you see that reaction to getting harassed on that play, and... There's been plenty of jawing back and forth in this game. We saw this after the penalty on Marshall's defense in the first drive, the scoring drive for Louisiana. So that's the other part of bowl season, Anish, is you've had some break, you've gone through, you've done your 15 or so bowl practices, you're tired of hitting each other. It's like training camp all over again. Want to hit the other guy, and uh, sometimes you get flagged for 15. So Marshall will have the ball nine, first at its own 46-yard line. Ali on first down. Stopped just short of midfield, a gain of three. Lorenzo McCaskill, leading tackler for Louisiana, in on the stop. Yep, his, his running mate, Farad Gardner, one of the players out on Louisiana's side for defense, in addition to Talon Humphrey, their mountain of a man, the 359, 49-pound nose guard. Wells to throw, high throw, brought in by Gamage. Give him five. It sets up third and two. Corey Gamage has been the top receiver for Marshall. 6'4", 220, originally committed to Florida out of high school. He's had to get his weight down. At one point with Marshall, he was up to around 240. He is a physical challenge for any cornerback in the country. Charles Huff said he finally committed himself to football and the results have shown this year. Miller, the tight end in motion on third and two. They give it to Ali. He's got a first down, still going, flag down. Ali inside the 30, but the penalty marker back at about the 47 yard line. Yep, they're going to get Devin Miller on the hold here, the tight end, trying to hang on in the perimeter. Personal foul, face mask, number 83 of the offense. 15-yard penalty, remains third down. Yeah, that's a big one. It negates a 17-yard run by Ali and it takes away a first down. And again, blocking one of those smaller bodies, just, it's so tough in space, but the right call and now third and a mile gets a lot more difficult. This is where all of a sudden you start to look at Sheldon Evans in the backfield, think maybe a running back screen, try and get him on the perimeter for some run after catch. Third and 17, Marshall needs the Louisiana 44. And Evans is not going to get close to the 44, picks up four. I guess he got close to his own 44, fourth down. And again, we talk about it. This is the gift and curse, and even for them, tempo's been sort of mitigated by the penalties, by the fact that your scoring was on a big play, but now the ball once again going back to Louisiana. And Marshall's been doing a great job holding up their end on the defense, getting them to long yardage, but... At some point, you can only take so much, especially shorthanded. Lefevre to punt it away. Garer, the return man, took a punt return back for a TD against Iowa State in a win last year. Fields the grounder, dangerous play, and tackled at the 11-yard line. A 47-yard punt. Levi Lewis and company back out on offense.
The Progressive Bowl Challenge Cup is here at the Arendelle Carriers New Orleans Bowl. It'll be awarded to the conference that has the highest win percentage in this postseason. Let's take a look at last year's standings. The Big 12 won the 2020 Bowl Challenge Cup. Hey, the MAC, 2-0. Levi Lewis off the hands of his tight end, Meagle. That could have been a big gainer in the flat. Instead, it's second and ten. And you're starting to see Marshall responding quicker to these routes in the flat, but that time, just a ball that was on him, you have to have. They've really been trying to attack with those rollouts. They've clearly found an advantage with their running backs and tight ends on these back linebackers and safeties. Uh, we've seen if you commit, uh, you've got the receiver. If you back off, Levi Lewis can run and pick up yardage. Screen pass to Fleming. He lost the football, ruled incomplete. Abraham was right there. Marshall's got a couple of corners with really premium bloodlines. Stephen Gilmore, number three, the younger brother of Stephon Gilmore, former first-rounder out of South Carolina, now with the Panthers. Micah Abrams' dad, Abraham's dad, Donnie Abraham, played a decade in the NFL, had 38 career interceptions in his time with the Jets and the Bucks. And now this is where Marshall specializes in getting their defensive end bodies on the field, their NASCAR package. You watch number 58, Elijah Alston. 14 quarterback pressures on the season. Lewis on the slant. There's Carter. Went the wrong way and then gang tackled. And the Marshall defense the last two times out has found an answer. What are they doing better? Well, they're getting great stops on first and second down. Like, if you want success on third down, you get them in those longer down and distance situations. We've seen Levi Lewis eating them alive in the flat, but nothing down the field so far. So now Marshall can tee off downhill. So Burns will punt from his own two-yard line. And waiting just inside his own 45, Willie Johnson. Good kick. It takes a Louisiana bounce. Johnson fields, turns up field, and sidesteps out of bounds at the 42, a 50-yard punt. Good starting field position yet again for the thundering herd. Had a chance for Marshall to take the lead. The Arendelle Carriers New Orleans Bowl is brought to you by Arendelle Global Logistics. Worldwide logistics and supply chain solutions. Pretty impressive list of alumni for Marshall. Byron Leftwich, offensive coordinator for Tampa Bay. And there is a head coaching gig in his future. Charles Huff, first year head coach for Marshall. This team went four and one down the stretch. A lot to like about where he can take this program again. They'll be joining the Sun Belt at the latest in 2023. He spent the last two years at Alabama with Nick Saban. He's been great with running backs, and he's got a great running back in Rashid Ali, who's north of 100 yards on the game here in the second quarter with 11 plus minutes to go. And he cuts right off the block of his left tackle, Will Ulmer, number 50. You see him get that hook there. And Ali rides that wave again, pressing the hole, put his foot in the ground, and another big gainer. They came into this game in these 22 plays of 40 plus yards, good for fifth in the country. Now look at the numbers, four carries, 110 yards. Marshall's only run 10 plays in this game. Wells on the slant, Gamage, and he's got a first down. Taylor, that Saban experience has paid dividends for Charles Huff. He said he learned consistency, the value of it, because at Alabama, everything is consistent. Preparation, practice, communication. Saban said that eliminates anxiety and allows your athletes to perform at a consistent level. Huff said when they were preparing for the national championship game, they were practicing for that game the same way they were for week one. That's when it really struck home for him how much that is important. Ali. Sweeps to the right, stays in bounds, and scores. Second touchdown of the game for Rashid Ali. 
And Marshall takes its first lead of the night. Anish, good runs happen when the O-line blocks. Great runs happen when you've got receivers blocking. You see Shadid Ahmed on the outside and the rest of that group working on the perimeter. Let's go just in time, but enough on the edge there to allow him to get that corner. Now, Taylor told us earlier, the boxing background of Ali, it shows up the most with the footwork. You saw it as he was able to stay in bounds. PAT is good. Two touchdowns for Ali, who now leads the nation in total touchdowns with 24. He went in from 63, goes in from 13. touchdowns by Rasheen Ali of Marshall and the Thundering Herd leading Sunbelt champion Louisiana 14 to 10. First meeting of many between these two. Marshall out of Conference USA joining the Sunbelt where Louisiana right now is king of the hill. The Ragin' Cajuns will have it at the 25. Tonight's clutch delivery is brought to you by Chipotle, Rasheen Ali, the delivery man. He's been sensational so far. Both drives, one a scoring drive on the big play. The next one set up by the great cutback, getting him down. And then his dedication to hitting these rushes where they're supposed to go, trusting his blocking on these outside zone plays. It's been remarkable all season, but tonight he's putting on a show early in this one. He has been the offense, and it's not hyperbole. Louisiana scored on its first two drives. They've punted on the last two. Montrell Johnson, freshman of the year in the Sun Belt, picks up five. And now Johnson's got some home run ability as well. He had a 99-yard touchdown run earlier this season. Longest in conference history and one of 13 players in NCAA history to go 99 yards on the ground for a score. And you see them getting back to their bread and butter. Last drive, pass on first down, pass on second down, pass on third down, punt. They want to beat them up in the middle a little bit, start to reestablish what they had in the first quarter. Little pop pass, hello! Oh, and Porter meets it in the backfield, and it's third and long. We mentioned the Army. And Errol Rogers is down. The training staff hurried onto the field. Boy, you could hear that hit upstairs. 55, Owen Porter coming straight up. He's supposed to be the player you occupy with the read on that play. No one blocks him because the speed of that handoff, that pop pass, is supposed to get past him before he gets upfield. Just great recognition on his part. Rogers walking slowly off the field. You hope he's okay. This is an offense without... Two of its top receivers coming into the game. No Peter LeBlanc, the number one receiver. Jalen Williams, the 26-year-old who's been around the block, played some minor league baseball as well, also out. And now Rodgers to the sideline, and it's third and nine. And again, Elijah Alston, number 58, lined up as a three technique over one of the guards. They get these small bodies in a pass rush mismatch. Four-man rush, Lewis moving the pocket. Gets a block. Montrell Johnson, the freshman, throwing the big block. And Lewis pushed out of bounds about two yards shy of the marker by Corey McCoy. For the all-conference DB. Offense looking to the sideline. Reese Burns, the punter, was ready to come on. Then went back, and now the punt team is on for Louisiana. So three times in a row now, this Marshall defense starting to figure out this Louisiana offense. And Anish, I know sometimes there's a criticism now in modern football. It's too much like Madden, but fourth and one, the way your offense has been rolling off the ball, I wouldn't have hated going for it in this spot. Because once again, Marshall's going to get decent field position off this for their home run hitter. Burns, first team all-conference punter. This one will take a Louisiana bounce. Johnson fields it off the bounce. The two Ragin' Cajuns players had their heads turned. And it'll be thundering herd football. 
this season along with their contributions to the university's general scholarship funds. For every field goal and extra point made, Allstate also donated to the American Red Cross to help with disaster relief efforts. Thank you, Allstate. Clash of styles, right? We've seen Louisiana have a couple of clock-churning scoring drives. Marshall, it's been quick strikes, time of possession, a plus 10-minute advantage for Louisiana, plus four where it matters on the scoreboard for Marshall. And that's why I think those fourth and one opportunities matter. You're going to need points to win this game now that this Marshall offense has woken up after that first quarter. On the end around, Willie Johnson looking for the perimeter. And got about a yard. It all comes down to this, the college football playoff semifinals. Friday, December 31st. Alabama versus Cincinnati. The Bearcats, the first group of five team to crash the playoff party. First playoff appearance for Michigan against Georgia. The Dogs were the number one team most of the season before getting humbled in the SEC championship by Alabama. Really interesting styles make fights in those matchups. Alabama's speed on the perimeter, a real mismatch. It's going to be war in the trenches between Georgia and Michigan down in Miami. Grant Wells will take a shot too high for Miller. It sets up third down. John Mechie, one of Alabama's best receivers, is out. And you start to say, what gives Cincinnati a chance against a team like Alabama? Well, the Bearcats have one of the best secondaries in the country. Sauce Gardner, Kobe Bryant. The Thorpe Award winner, Kobe Bryant. Now they've got a safety as well who's got a chance to play on Sundays. On third down, Wells under pressure, gets away from Manak. Buying time, back over the middle of the field, he completes Shadid Ahmed for a first down at the 40-yard line. Juco transfer in his second season with the Herd. Grant Wells doing his best Levi Lewis impression here. You see Chauncey Manak, the great pass rusher, just missing on the left side. Throwing the ball back across the body in the middle of the field. Usually doesn't work out well, but a great play. And first down now for Marshall. Wells, four out of seven. The give is to Ali, and that time he's in the embrace of Jordan Quibido. Second down. Every time Ali touches the football, there is a sense of anticipation. You can feel it in the building. It puts a lot of pressure on you as a defender because now you feel like you've got to be perfect. There's no margin for error on some of these tackles, and we've seen guys a little late getting over. That's going to open up some big seams in the passing game here soon with him rolling downhill like this. Second and 12 after a loss of two. Jaden Harrison, the Vandy transfer, gets six back. And it brings up third and six for Marshall. On the season, the Herd 42% on third downs. Opponents at 36% against Louisiana. And this is where they like to get some motion on offense. Try and see if you've got a man matchup for your running back, who's a great pass catcher. Close to 50 catches for Ali. Third most by a running back in a single season in school history. Wells has time, now flushed. Has to get rid of it, low throw. And it's a catch by Devin Miller, the fifth year junior out of Metuchen, New Jersey. It'll bring up fourth and two. And this is a great and time to get up to the line. Marshall goes for it. Oh. It does not appear they will. I know, you're big on the analytics, right? Hey. Fourth and two, fourth and short, this part of the field. Analytics tells you to go for it. Well, it's just general football aggressiveness. You work so hard for these opportunities. And listen, you get ready for a fake right here if you're Louisiana on defense. They got punt safe out there. That's the starting defense lined up just to be aware of any funny business. Well, a fever will punt it. We don't have to be in the box. Fair catch called for and made by Guerrero inside his own 20, a 36-yard kick. Louisiana jumped out to a 10-0 lead. 14 unanswered by Marshall.
It's the Arendelle Carriers New Orleans Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. 14 to 10 Marshall on top of Louisiana. The Raging Cajuns lost their season opener to Texas. They've won 12 straight undefeated in the Sun Belt and Sun Belt Conference champions. Amani Bailey to the perimeter and he gets loose for a nice game. Give him eight. Levi Lewis needed 284 yards passing today to break Jake DeLome's career mark at Louisiana. 12 of 17 for 82 so far. Lewis will keep it. Got a good block from his tight end. He was a high school track star. Levi Lewis still going. Down the sideline, inside the 20 of Marshall. 55 yards for the sixth year senior. And this was designed run all the way. We've seen all these rollouts. That was his police escort right there, number 89, Hunter Bergeron. And then all Levi Lewis in the open field. Just a gifted athlete, guy who really understands what to do with the ball in his hands. Marked out at the 20 yard line, red zone opportunity for Louisiana. The give is to Bailey on the cutback. Inside the 15, down to the 13, a gain of seven. Imani Bailey missed some time this season with a knee injury and required surgery. But the last three games, he got the bulk of the carries in what was a three-headed running back monster, Bailey, Johnson, and Chris Smith, the leading rusher who's out for this game. Bailey again. To the 10-yard line, he appears to have the first down. First and goal, Louisiana. You look at this rushing offense. Starts up front with a very talented offensive line, but there's a lot of guys that can beat you on the ground. Uh, it's certainly this running back room, all the depth you see. 11 touchdowns for Montrell Johnson. Chris Smith, we know, not in uniform for them tonight. But they have plenty of capable rushers, and all that leads to a lot of guys in the box down here. And an iso up Kyron Lacey, 6'5 wide receiver for them, all the way out in the perimeter. Two tight ends set. Lewis, quarterback keeper. Cat and mouse with Boplin. And stiff arms his way out of bounds. Gave Kobe Cumberlander the business, but only a yard. And all of this, you see him threading the perimeter again, just designed to run right away. And so what's this going to do? All of a sudden, get these defenders committed up for those rollouts. There's going to be an open tight end like we saw on the second drive of the game for Louisiana on one of these next plays when Levi Lewis breaks contain. Two tight ends in the game. It's Lumpkin and Meagle. They're on the right side of the offensive line. Now both motion. And you see two guys come over, so Levi Lewis knows he's got man coverage. Lewis hits Montrell Johnson. And the New Orleans native gets three more, third and goal. Abraham made the tackle. Four down territory here for Louisiana. I think so. I think the way you've seen Marshall able to score on offense, we mentioned the drought on third down is fine if you have plenty of work on conversion downs, third and fourth down. We've seen no semblance of drop back passing game in each. They've got the field to Levi Lewis's right. Remember, lefty, that's his offhand, could give him a chance to set up and finally hit one of these tight ends coming from the backside this time. Yeah, if he rolls to the left, that is the short side of the field. Fleming and Jefferson, the receivers, and a whistle before the snap. Play clock was at two and a timeout by Marshall. Timeout. Marshall, this is their first timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. Two thirty-three to go in the first half with a preview of halftime. Matt Berry. A 
I want to see a Ferris State highlight in there as well. One of the great stories in Ooh. college football. Ferris State quarterback Jared Bernhardt was the Tawartan Award winner for Maryland Lacrosse this spring and now leading Ferris State to the D2 championship game, which is going on right now. The Tawaritan report, uh, awarded each year to the best player in collegiate lacrosse. It's the so. Heisman of lacrosse, and now he's the best player and the quarterback for Ferris State football. Pretty neat story on the D D2 ranks. He's going to get Sunday looks. That is a dynamic athlete in space. Third and goal from the six-yard line. Bailey fighting forward. Not going to get there. It's fourth down. He got to the three-yard line, and let's see what Louisiana does. Well, I think that rushing attempt tells you they're ready to go for it on fourth down. You had the time out there to get your plan in order, and now this is, again, Levi Lewis. We've seen him used as a weapon in this rushing attack this entire drive. I'd get him on the perimeter and give him the two-way option of trying to get it to one of your tight ends coming from the left to right or let him take it in himself. Fourth and goal. And movement on the right side of that offensive line. And start. Number 50 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. That's Nathan Thomas making his first career start today. Yep, and you got him on the tackle over here. So they take him over from left tackle. They move him to the right side to try and get that heavy setup over there. And a guy in a new spot. Remember, that's the story for a lot of Louisiana tonight. Moving parts. New head coach in this game. Offensive line shuffled around. And now you've got to settle for three and deviate from the plan. Snyder has been erratic this season. He made one earlier today, 5 of 10. Starting kicker Kenny Almanderas went down with a hip injury in September. 25-yard kick. And Snyder tonight is 2 for 2. Michael Desermo, former quarterback at Louisiana. First game as head coach, taking over for Billy Napier, who left to take the Florida job. And what a job Napier did in his time in Lafayette. The last three years, this was one of the winningest programs in college football, the high renaissance of Louisiana football. Sunday countdown, 10 a.m. Eastern. We go all access with the NFL sack leader, T.J. Watt, plus a look at Micah Parsons' journey. What a rookie season he's had. Uh, absolutely dynamic. It's great that almost by accident, injury for the Cowboys forced him into that role as a pass rusher where when you go back and watch him at Penn State, he was always such an, a force going towards the quarterback. Dallas works their way into that. Now nine sacks in his last six games. He's unstoppable. Fourteen to thirteen after the field goal by Snyder, and it's Snyder who sends it away. Marshall Ball at the twenty-five. We told you Billy Napier going to Florida to be the head coach. He was on that two thousand fifteen Alabama staff. This team picture—it's like Raphael's School of Athens. A who's who. Mario Cristobal was on that staff. Now the head coach at Miami. Mel Tucker was on that staff. Now the head coach at Michigan State. Lane Kiffin was the OC on that team. Now the head coach at Ole Miss. You had Kirby Smart as the defensive coordinator. Of course, Napier on staff, as you saw. And a graduate assistant on that team, Dan Lanning, now the head coach at Oregon. The only other staff that compares, you go back to that 1983 Iowa team. Hayden Fry is the head coach. You had Bill Snyder, you had Bob Stoops, you had Kirk Ferentz, Billy Alvarez. Dan McCarney was on that staff as well. It's remarkable. And when you talk to all these coaches involved, and we had the chance to meet with both of these staffs, as we see a player down for Louisiana right now. It's McCaskill, the leader, leading tackler. Farad Gardner already out tonight, so this is a big one to watch. You certainly hope he's okay. Been an incredible tone setter for this defense. When we talked to Wes Neighbors, who's now stepping in as the defensive coordinator for this game, he said it's the tone he sets in practice each and every day, the attitude he brings that rallies the rest of this unit.
A lot of injuries for Louisiana. A lot of players who have battled injuries down the stretch and are being held out of this game for that reason. You mentioned Gardner, Taylor Humphrey, who's a force on the D-line, and you know, you're missing your leading rusher, Chris Smith. Your right tackle, who was an All-American, and Max Mitchell. You're missing Peter LeBlanc, your top receiver statistically. And I think it says a lot about this staff working with the players. Max Mitchell's got an invite to go play in the Senior Bowl. These guys have Sunday futures, and everyone involved saying, we need to make the decision that's best for the player here. You applaud everyone involved for that. That's the way it should be. Second and two after the run by Ali. Marshall's got two timeouts. Wells steps up, completes underneath its gamage. And does he get out of bounds? That's the question. He does. We haven't seen much in the way of tempo from Marshall's offense tonight. Getting up to the line quick, but then looking over to the sideline, taking in the defense, getting in the right call. After the gamage first down, another quick release, complete to midfield. A gain of seven. Gamage again, his fourth reception. Clock continues to run. Two timeouts left for Marshall on the plus side. Plenty of time to operate your offense as is. Wells downfield, too high, it's intercepted. Off the hands of Gaines, into the hands of Braylon Trahan. Seventh career pick for Trahan, and he brings it into Marshall territory, and now Louisiana with all three timeouts, a chance to take the lead before halftime. And it looked like one of the D linemen almost got a hand on that ball. It's so far behind Xavier Gaines. Louisiana coming into this game over their last four, plus 12 in turnover margin. And this has been the exact issue for Grant Wells in that Marshall uniform. 13 turnovers, 13 interceptions, excuse me, on the season now. Marshall, 24 turnovers. That has been the issue for this team. You look back at all their close losses, four of their five defeats by one score. You point to turnovers as a culprit in most of them. Levi hasn't gone deep all game. This is a great time for your first shot play if you're Louisiana. Off sudden change. Pressure coming from Porter. Lewis escapes. Heaves it downfield. It's caught! Jacob Bernard. And it's first and goal, a gain of 42. That's just his fourth reception of his career. An opportunity for some of these receivers to step up as Louisiana now getting to the line of scrimmage, going tempo of their own. Levi Lewis. Lewis. Jump ball in the end zone. Incomplete for Lacey, who's got the one Louisiana touchdown. Tried to get up and take advantage of that matchup. Levi Lewis, man, what he was able to do, buying time in the pocket back there, making guys miss. And the deep ball, that is something that he has worked tirelessly on the last two seasons. It's part of the self-scout. They go through the offseason, and they said, okay, we thought we'd done a good job scheming guys open. The quarterback said, all right, I'll take the challenge. I've got to deliver answering that question this season. Lewis rolls to his left. They'll try to run. He shoved out of bounds. It brings up a third down. Ball at the four-yard line, 24 seconds to go. If the last series was any indication, with the three timeouts, this may be four down territory, even though a field goal gives you the lead. Absolutely, and I think if you're Louisiana, you've got to start to work up the middle more. Marshall's defense, small and fast, as we see Coach Dez burn a timeout here. He understands the opportunity you got before the half. You got all three timeouts now down to two. They've got to beat them up up the middle in these. For all we've talked about, Marshall's defense struggling. Ninth in red zone defense this season. Levi Lewis here. This is the big play that set this up. The pump fake to get the defender to jump. And then rolling to that left side. Is it the prettiest ball in the world? No. But on time, give your receiver a chance to run under it. And again, the creativity. 
And you saw the injury before. That's Lorenzo McCaskill taking the time before going into the halftime locker room. Fired up. His numbers when he's throwing downfield. Air yards, 15 or more yards. So this is the deep ball we talked about. Uh, the, the biggest thing that jumps out to me, he's making better decisions. Eight interceptions, 2017 to 2020. Just one in the time frame there. Values the football. You see that bunch to the right side here. It's a great chance. Lean on him, trying to get a rush up the middle like you did before the penalty last drive. Montrell Johnson, the New Orleans native. And he is driven back right to the line of scrimmage. No jambalaya for him. It's fourth and goal. Clock ticking down. Louisiana is going to use its last time out and attempt a field goal. Desermo calls it with three seconds. Timeout, Louisiana. So Snyder, who's been hit or miss most of the season, has been hit tonight. He's made his two field goal attempts. That 40-plus yarder, that first one, seeing the ball go through the basket, I think big for his confidence in this game. And now you can rely on him. We've seen the pace really oscillate in this game, the slow grind of the first quarter with Louisiana on top. Marshall's big play offense showing up in that second quarter. And now to end the half here, Louisiana can go in leading by two. Snyder has connected from 42 and 25. And this will be a 29, or rather a 24-yard attempt. And Marshall, of course, you got two timeouts. Louisiana's kicking. You got to freeze the kicker, so we get the obligatory timeout. freeze the Marshall. kicker timeout from this Charles Huff. Hey, we keep bowling timeout. on Tuesday. Two more games on ESPN. If you haven't seen Dustin Crum, the Kent State quarterback, he's fun to watch. True dual threat, Kent State and Wyoming. Famous Idaho Potato Bowl. And then the Tropical Smoothie Cap Frisco Bowl. UTSA, conference champions in Conference USA. Jeff Trailer has done a tremendous job. The triangle, Trust right? Trust the triangle, Anish. The triangle of toughness. Meet, meet, baby. The Roadrunners, they've got a great running back, too, Sincere McCormick. It's been outstanding. That's a tough group up front. A lot like this Louisiana outfit wants to beat you up in the middle with that great offensive line as well. So Snyder take two from 24 for the lead. <laughs> Last game of the year. Last game of the year, and he's not holding hey, anything back. You, you, you can't take him into the offseason. Final timeout of the half. 30 second timeout. Uh, see, there, that is Gidry, the defensive coordinator, Lance Gidry. He's laughing. He and Tim Leger, the offensive coordinator, the interim OC for Louisiana. They're great friends. They've coached together. There is a competitiveness. There's a friendship. There's a camaraderie. But the competitive juice is flowing between those two. And, and that was a moment for the two former McNeese coaches. Uh, again, these guys love each other. They're such great <laughs> friends still off the field. But you can see he loves that opportunity to twist the knife a little bit heading into the half. It's allowed to be fun for the coaches, too. Now they're looking across the sideline. Seriously, another timeout? Yes, seriously. Snyder. And after all that, he makes the field goal to send us into halftime. Three first half field goals by Nate Snyder, <laughs> who mimics the timeout motion while looking at the Marshall bench. Oh, the kicker is trash talking. That's how we go into halftime. Louisiana leading at the half for the 12th time this season. Snyder, his third field goal. Give me a T.O. Well, not you. We're sending you to Matt Berry. Louisiana 
leading 16 to 14 against Marshall on the strength of three Nate Snyder field goals and a Levi Lewis touchdown pass, two rushing touchdowns by Rasheen Ali. The scoring for the Thundering Herd and Ishraf, Mike Golick Jr. Second half, what are the key adjustments we need to see? Uh, I think for Louisiana on offense, they've got to be more creative with their downfield passing game, relying too much on the flats. And, and then I think on the other side, for Marshall, Rasheen Ali, you got to find more creative ways to get him the football in both the run and pass game. Marshall will receive to begin the third quarter. First half stats are brought to you by PlayStation, and the two stars we highlighted at the top of the broadcast have delivered so far. I mean, Rasheen Ali accounting for 70% of Marshall's offense and all their touchdowns so far in this game, Anish. Time of possession, a big advantage for Louisiana in that first half, 21 minutes. Less than nine minutes for Marshall. Harrison from the 10. And the Vandy transfer all the way to the 30. Taylor. Coach Desermo at halftime said he wants to be better with the play call in the second half. He felt like in the first half he was calling too many things sideways, really wants to run at them this half, get in front of the six so he can use some tempo. Now, as for Charles Huff, he said time of possession, no issue. It's all about execution. The biggest thing he was worried about were turnovers. He has said we have got to clean that up. He really likes the way they're playing defensively and offensively. He would like to see them stay balanced. That play calling huge for Coach Dez after he got out of the scripted plays because remember, Billy Napier was the one calling them all season long. Rasheen Ali up the gut, picks up three. The turnover that Taylor alluded to, it was an interception thrown by Wells. It went off the hands of the tight end Gaines. Trahan picked it off. That led to the field goal before halftime, which gave Louisiana the lead, and that's the difference right now. That is. That and Louisiana having to settle for field goals getting down into the red zone. They've got to put points up because that's what this Marshall offense is going to do. Wells to damage his fifth catch, and he's out to the 35-yard line. It brings up third and five. And for all that Rasheen Ali has done, I think this is an area where Marshall in the second half can try and exploit him. He's a matchup nightmare against linebackers if he gets man coverage. And I think if you're Tim Cramsey, the offensive coordinator, you've got to start to scheme and give your quarterback a view of if he can start to use that running back as a weapon. Tenth time, Gamage has five receptions in a game this season. Wells looking to set up the screen. It's knocked away by Manek. Waited, waited, waited. It was never there. Uh, and Manak just sniffing it out the entire way. The stand-up end. And you hear defensive linemen talk about this. They love that stand-up spot because you can see everything a little clearer. He reacts to the offensive line. And Anish Chauncey Manak, a monster Sunbelt Championship game. Just continuing to build off that. Two TFLs, a forced fumble against App State. In a game against Liberty last month, four sacks. Lefevre's punt bounces at the 31. Has a little English on it, and it's downed at the 29, a 36-yard kick. Monday night football, a big one in the NFC North. Minnesota visiting Soldier Field to take on the Bears. Vikings still very much alive in the playoff hunt, and Dalvin Cook last time out. 200 plus yards on the ground for Minnesota against Pitt. Yeah, he was sensational here, that Bears defense. We know without one of their best defensive players in Khalil Mack, but they also just had the Patriots just upseated by Indian, uh, Indianapolis. The Colts got the win for them. Monster rush from Jonathan Taylor. Oh, 29 rushes for 170 yards. Yeah, huge for Indianapolis. On first down, Amani Bailey picks up three. So you look at play selection in that first half, Mike, and what jumps out to you? I mean, pretty balanced attack overall. But to Taylor's point, for Coach Dez calling these plays for the first time, their offense is grounded in inside zone first and foremost here. They want to use that advantage, and when they go east and west that much, this is a small, quick martial defense. You're playing right to what they want. Marshall in man. Lewis 
Downfield, open receiver, it's Bernard. And he's across midfield and heard territory, a gain of 18. Without some key pieces in the receiving game, others have had to step up, including seldom used Jacob Bernard, two catches tonight. He's been their deep threat now as Louisiana uses some tempo. And they get to the perimeter with Fleming. And he picks up another first down. And don't look now, Bernard was the one that springed him on the block there. This is an unselfish group. We talked about the way the ball gets spread around coming into this game with six receivers with 15 catches and 200 yards each. They all understand the ball's going to get to you if you work. Lewis pumps. Downfield, his receiver had a step, had to come back to it, and it's incomplete. Underthrown double double move. You watch Lacey right here, turns around, tries to sell it. And Levi Lewis, if he can put that out in front, that's a great job by Micah Abram to not go into the chest of the defender. A lot of times those underthrown deep balls turn into pass interference penalties. Now that's been the punchline, right? You want to connect on a deep ball, underthrow it. If you don't get it, usually it'll be DPI. You really have to thread a needle if you're a defensive back in modern football. That's just the way the game has gone. Second and ten. Lewis, quarterback keeper, got a big block by Thomas on that right side. And a first down for Levi Lewis. 80-plus yards on the ground and number 50, Thomas making his first career start, sealing the edge. Yeah, this is a bash. So the quarterback and the running back exchange responsibilities. They ran a counteraction up front of the offensive line with the quarterback as the designed rusher if he doesn't hand off that jet sweep for the running back. You see number four, Montrell Johnson. He ends up being what would be the quarterback read on most read option plays. Eight carries, 84 yards for Lewis. Montrell Johnson stood up at the 20. Gilmore the first to get in there, only a yard. And now we're down in the area where we've seen Louisiana struggle since that first drive. They're three for three inside the red zone, but the last two drives stalled because of penalties and a lack and a failure to execute once you get down into the red area. Out of the two tight end set, Lewis will throw. Under pressure, chased by Porter. Got away from him, got away from T.J. Johnson, and to turn that into positive yardage somehow. The only explanation is he actually has eyes on the back of his head here, because there was no way for him to see Owen Porter coming from that backside, but feels it and turns on the Jets here as he sees T.J. Johnson coming towards him. That's autonomous ultra instinct right there, if I've ever seen it. In high school, Lewis competed in the 100, 200, and 400 meter. He's got that kind of speed. Third and seven now. Louisiana 0 for its last seven on third downs. They give it to Johnson, and he hammerheads to about the 12-yard line. He's going to be a little short. That play call tells you. They were thinking, go for it on fourth. And they were thinking exactly what Taylor brought up coming out of the half. They go straight inside zone right up the middle as Marshall was putting their defensive tackles on the outside shoulders of the guard. So you got all that space right inside. And this is another great spot involved Levi Lewis in the running game. He's been the only guy on your offense capable of making guys miss. Use him as a run fake. Double tight end set. Lewis. Under pressure, floats it into the end zone, incomplete. Turnover on downs. Intended for Fleming, defended well by Marshall. And this is Marshall adjusting after the first half. They saw so much of that rollout to Levi Lewis's strong arm, that throwing arm his left side, that they sent two players there. And stopped him short here. So Marshall once again bowing up in the red zone. This time, forcing the turnover on downs. They'll take over with a chance to take the lead when we come back.
join us virtually for the college football playoff all access experience we have exclusive content games and daily prize drops registered today espn.com slash cfp all access rasheen ali not much there zion hill gets in there for louisiana we mentioned the raging cajuns down Taylor humphrey they're down farad gardner lorenzo mccaskill back in there after getting shaken up earlier even without Humphrey and McCaskill, you still have seven all-conference defenders. And so many bodies they roll through up front on defense, including the very disruptive Zion Hill. Ali in motion. Here's the dump off to Xavier Gaines. 25-year-old, sixth-year senior out of Frost Proof, Florida. What a great city name that is. Honestly, and you wouldn't expect that. Well, I guess in Florida, it would be Frost Proof. Of course. Hence the name. It's like the oranges. They freeze him in the wintertime. So I got to bring that orange tree inside for the winter. He's been one of the most productive tight ends in school history. Actually came to Marshall as a four-star dual-threat quarterback who had offers from the top schools in the country. Ali on third and short ran into a roadblock. It'll bring up fourth down. Now the initial spot has him short. Uh, looks like they've changed the spot. That's a generous spot. It's going to be a first down. Yeah, I think there you see where forward contact ends up going. You see that extra shove. I think that's the right call. And a gutsy run up the middle here to keep this moving. And they may look at this. The initial spot from the far side. And these calls are often hard to overturn. The initial call from the far side had him about a full yard short. And it's always a question of when they blow the whistle because you saw that extra effort shove from the Marshall offensive line, but had the official already blown it dead at that point. Ruling on the field is the first down, like you mentioned. So you need indisputable video evidence to overturn this. So you need about the 22. Does he ever get to the 22? And then the question is, when is the play blown dead? Right there, the play's still going. He's not quite there. Now you get the push. But the official line were judge comes in. in. We really need to hear the whistle. Yeah, hard to do this without the sound. I still think on the initial flash, you saw him get up into the line and get towards, I believe, that first down marker before he got wrapped up. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. Yeah, again, those plays generally very hard to overturn when you're trying to determine the spot we see it far more often times than not you default to the ruling on the field first down for marshall on the run by ali who's got 137 now on the ground on just 10 carries sixth 100 yard game of the season for the redshirt freshman from cleveland ali again met by mccaskill now, there have been some collisions tonight. That's a gain of a couple. Yeah, all these linebackers tonight came to hit. You buckled the chin strap for this one on each and every down, but a lot of it's been the D-line, too. We mentioned what you miss with Talon Humphrey. That was a 6'5", 350-pound nose guard who ate up blockers, who kept those linebackers clean. So you're seeing Jaquan Nelson, Sonny Hazard in there, occupying those same bodies, doing a great job. Wells will run and steps out of bounds. Questionable decision. He had room to pick up the first down, and he kept on going and still could have gotten out of bounds. Uh, I mean, look at the end of this play. Again, probably could have taken off sooner here. You see the defenders start to bail out. You've got your running back there. But then there's an easy two, three yards there with McCaskill in pursuit. So instead of a first down, it's third down. About two to go. Never want my quarterback taking hits, but in that spot, you've got to sell out for that, knowing you're backed up still. Play clock winding down. Ali running backwards. The ball comes out. It's knocked out of bounds. Marshall will keep it. Louisiana was looking for the scoop and score. 
And that sequence by Marshall could come back to haunt them. Wells goes Rolling out of bounds the before the marker backwards. on the very Not next about. play. Ali gets ambushed, nearly turns it over, Fourth and down. now Marshall's got a punt. Amos rips it away, and got a little greedy trying to pick it up and go in for six. Well, and you saw that ball in the inside hand for Ali there. He's running toward the left. The ball's in on that right hand, so it's an easier access point for the defense. Ali had some fumbling issues early in the season. Four fumbles in his first five games, only one since up until that one. The previous play of a fumble backwards out of bounds is under further review. So we'll get a replay review here. Trying to see if he actually was down before this fumble. Does that elbow go down? I don't. That left elbow is the one in question. Does that left elbow come down before the ball comes out? Either way, it's going to be fourth down for Marshall. Just depends where they're going to have the ball. And again, the, was the ball coming out, too? That's the question as I, well. And again, ruling on the field was a fumble. I think that ball was getting jostled loose before any part of that elbow or his lower leg hit the ground. If the ball is coming out, Maybe that angle helps us. Yeah. Again, we have not seen anything conclusive yet. Now, right there, the ball looks like it's already on its way out. That's a tie goes to the runner spot. Rule to fumble on the field. Well, the question is, right there, right before that left elbow comes down, if the ball is coming out, and it appears to be coming out as that left elbow comes down, this is going to be hard to overturn. That's a great rip by Amos on yeah. that one, too. Normally, when you're coached on defense, it's the second guy in goes for that rip, but he sees the ball in that inside arm, understands you've already got the running back backpedaling and takes a swipe at it. That's a heads-up play. Marshall held under 200 but yards on the review, day. Ruling on the field stands. Fourth down. Yeah. So fourth down, Marshall will have to punt, and uh, Louisiana has bottled up this Marshall offense with the exception of a couple of big plays by Ali. This was a top 10 offense entering play. One of the best on the ground in terms of rushing touchdowns. Louisiana came in with a top 11 scoring defense and now Lefevre will punt from his own end zone. Guerra waits at midfield. Louisiana had four blocked kicks this season. Guerra fields it on a couple of bounces. An outstanding starting field position for the Ragin' Cajuns after a 43-yard punt. Levi Lewis and the O back to work. The Arundel Carriers New Orleans Bowl is brought to you by Golden Ocala Golf and Equestrian Club. Luxury living in Central Florida. I hate you guys, by the way, number one. Taylor and Mike decided, hey, let's wake up real early on a day we've got a, a late game. Let's go running around the Superdome. Let's take part in yoga. By the way, Taylor, how impressed were you with Mike's yoga skills? He was by far the best of the group. Beyond impressed. I was wondering if his mom used to take him to yoga classes as a kid because his talent level was up there. I mean, you got to know how to do those poses, and Golik, you knew. Spent a lot of time on the mat during the pandemic, my friends. The best part of that, though, was the intermission between running and yoga. We had about an hour and a half to kill, and Mike, as he does every week with our crew on the road, managed to find a clutch donut spot where you had maybe the biggest cinnamon roll we've ever seen. Uh, listen, I'm like a bloodhound when it comes to finding carbs, and we found a cinnamon roll about the size of my head here. You and Taylor, valiant effort picking at that thing, yep. and I came in to shoulder the load. So we were running at 8 a.m., cinnamon roll at 9 a.m., namaste at 10 a.m. Screen pass, and that was thrown behind the line of scrimmage, so there's no pass interference. Intended for Bailey, it'll bring up third down. It's a great job by Taekwaz legs. One of the few big bodies on this defensive line, 6'3", 320 pounds. 
but understanding in that situation and now setting them up for those lighter pass rushers to get back on the field for Levi Lewis, who's going to have to make someone miss and extend the play again. Marshall showing blitz. Louisiana started four for four on third downs. 0 for eight since. Play clock down to two. They just get it off. Here's the pressure. Lewis submerged. Porter and Johnson got there. A Marshall defense that has now racked up 40 sacks on the season. And Anish, they saw the picture clearly. They used the double cadence to get a look at the blitz that was coming from Marshall. You had max protection on here. Look at number 87, Neil Johnson, the tight end, goes bailing out inside here and cuts off the running back. So now the timing of this is messed up. And you get a player coming from that opposite side here. If you see it like that on a double cadence, you've got to be able to execute. Seven TFLs for Marshall. This is a really good punt by Burns. That'll flip the field. Johnson slips a tackle, turns upfield, and out of bounds across the 35. And that was out kicking the coverage just a little bit and a nice individual effort by fast Willie Johnson. A 25-yard punt return. Thousands have been affected by Southern and Midwest tornadoes. If you would like to help, please visit redcross.org slash ESPN to help the Red Cross respond and help people recover from this disaster. Any little amount helps. Any Shroff, Mike Oli Jr., Taylor McGregor, Marshall Ball down two. And it's Gamage using that 6-4 frame to get across the 40-yard line. He gets four. Rasheen Ali exploded in the first half for 130 yards, actually in the red in the second half. Yeah, they've been spending so much time trying to get him to the perimeter. They got to go back to some of those counter runs, let him put his foot in the ground and get up the middle. And they give it to Sheldon Jones, and he's close to the marker. Jones, a redshirt junior from Roswell, Georgia, backup running back, but captain and a team leader. And a force coming in right now as they go tempo on third and short. Going to give it to him again. Right back up the gut. First down, Evans. His best game of his career came in the Camellia Bowl last year, 18 for 79. They got the bulk of the carries after Brendan Knox, who was a terrific running back for Marshall, opted out. Brandon Knox had... Uh, Brendan Knox had a cup of coffee in training camp with the Cowboys and uh, certainly put together a fine career with the herd. Ali back in there plus territory for the herd. Gamage in motion. Willie Johnson has the 40 still going down the sideline. And out of bounds, a flag at the end of the play. And you always got to watch on these plays now, the crackback blocks outlawed in college football, and then downfield right at the end, the big fella James McGee in space. And it's just so tough because now, fi after five yards down the field, Anish, you can't throw on Holy defenders man. anymore. Number 63 on the offense. Ten-yard penalty for the fall of the foul. Remains first down. It's still a first down. It's ten yards from the spot of the foul. Would have been 24 yards instead. First and, first and ten, Marshall, they'll spot the ball at the 36-yard line. It's a great way. We know Wells has struggled a bit under center to get the ball downfield tonight. So you're able to get the defense off balance. You saw them starting to spin safeties down and commit to the run more. Our first down, here's Gamage. 
They need to reset the sticks, which are wrong on the field, as we have extracurriculars. And now they'll move the chains to where they need to be. Thought we were going the other way for a second, yeah. so now it'll be now it'll be second down, but got a little fresh over at that Marshall sideline. I guess what they're saying is the previous play was third and short. So now it'll be first down and ten, and Ali takes it inside the 30. That play was snapped with the ball about a yard behind what the sticks had as the line to gain. You heard the officials say it was still a first down. Clearly it wasn't. So some issues with the chains, and I don't know if anybody's caught on down on the field. No, because it was listed as first down on that play, right. too, when they ran it, and then you get back up after that run and still had it as first down. One bowl game on the ledger for Monday. It's Old Dominion and Tulsa. The Monarchs of ODU started one and six, won five straight to become bowl eligible. Tulsa led by their senior running back, Shamari Brooks, was three and six, won their last three. The three of us to the game where Tulsa was at Cincinnati with game day in town, and they nearly pulled off the upset of the Bearcats had they won that game. They had multiple opportunities from the goal line in the final minute. Tulsa could have detonated Cincinnati Cinderella's season as Kendrick Sartor is being helped off the field. The right tackle for Marshall, fifth year junior. Started 11 games this year, entering tonight. Hadn't seen the field for much of his first four years. Now they do rotate in on the offensive line. There is some depth there. Second down, six to go. You see Ethan Driscoll now slots in at right tackle, number 52, in place of the injured Sartor. And he's played a good bit this year. Ali tries the right side, finds a little opening. That's all he needs. First down, a gain of seven. Yep, they don't want to give these defensive backs a chance to factor in the run game, so now you run it up in between the tackles. It's been inside and outside zone really for both of these teams and both of Ali's big play runs when you think about it, it's where he's been able to put his foot in the ground cut up in the middle of that defense and make someone miss what's the most impressive part of Ali's game full speed cuts to me his vision certainly to press to the front side but when he gets going downhill he doesn't have to slow down to change direction Wells gets rid of it quickly it's juggled and dropped by Talik Keaton If you're not Rasheen Ali or Corey Damage tonight, the ball is lava. This Marshall offense has been isolated to those two guys specifically. You credit Tim Cramsey, the offensive staff, and Coach Huff for finding creative ways to disguise it, but knocking on the door, you're going to have to have guys step up here. Wells, Manak got a hand in there, third down and 10. Chauncey Manak is just a human tempest. If he is near the play, there's going to be disruption. And this is the spot. When we asked this coaching staff and we asked Wes Neighbors, the defensive coordinator, when's he at his best? It's third and long, getting a chance to pin his ears back and go after the quarterback. He was a former ESPN 300 recruit who began his career in Georgia. Ali on the draw. Inside the 15, dives inside the 10. First and goal, Marshall Ali again, up to 147 yards rushing. It just unbelievably smooth, and now they're up to the line, getting ready to snap it again here. You saw Louisiana almost get caught with 12 on the field. Sheldon Evans now bouncing to the outside and brought down Andre Jones, the big 6'5 D end. And Louisiana got lucky. They almost got caught trying to substitute on that last play. But again, they go back and try and hit to the outside. And this time you get the initial penetration by Sonny Hazard, number 91. When the running back sees color like that in the hole, that's when he bounces. That's the instinct in the way they've got to read these plays. Jaquan Nelson comes into the game. A little more girth. 6'3", 290. Second and goal.
Wells keeps and tumbles inside the 10. Third and goal from the nine. And Ali coming back onto the field for the critical third down. We've seen them try and throw a couple of screens his way. Could be an opportunity to motion him and get him split out here. He's capable in every facet of the game we mentioned coming into this with over 45 receptions on the year. The 6-4 Gamage lined up at the bottom of your screen. And they give it to Ali on third and nine. Ali is in! His third touchdown of the game. We talked about the play where he had so much success in the first half. Run and counter. Watch number 63, James McGee, the left guard, pulls. And you're taught number one rule, inside out. Look at his hat. Gets on the inside of that Louisiana defender. has got no chance to get over the top and make that play. 21-16. A 12-play, 63-yard drive. Marshall back on top. Rasheen Ali now has 25 total touchdowns on the season. That's tops in the FBS. I hope everyone let this kid stay up after bedtime tonight because if you haven't seen Rasheen Ali before, this man's been worth the price of admission since the jump today. Had a 200-yard game against Charlotte last month. This is the eighth time this season He's had two or more touchdowns in a game. He had four in the season opener against Navy. We've told you about the boxing background and how perfect that is with the surname he has. He's been the star, the biggest star in New Orleans tonight. Can I say the pun? He's looking for a chance to be there. Knockout blow. I don't like me either all the time, but it had to be said. We've come to tolerate you. <laughs> it's been a long season for you and Taylor. God bless you both. Listen, we appreciate your nose for every great donut shop in every city we've been. Bouncing ball, Gehrer. And he is taken down hard by Boplin at the 25. And special teams, it's an area where Louisiana is at a market disadvantage. Almanderas, their starting kicker, has been out since September. And with Chris Smith, who was their leading rusher, he's also an ace on special teams who's a potential house call for you, one of the most dangerous return men in the country. So you miss him in two areas tonight. I will say, you miss those big play opportunities. I give these guys a lot of credit who have stepped in, especially on a lot of these knuckleballs, these dribblers. They've saved extra yardage by being able to field these clean off the ground and prevent maybe 10, 15 yards of lost field position from happening in a lot of these special team spots. Play clock down to two. Levi Lewis gives it to Montrell Johnson. Eli Neal the first to get there. A flag is down. Yeah, he got him on the face mask. Might be Porter. Been active in the backfield all night for Porter, but yeah, he knows it. Yep. Same spot coming up the field. We saw him make that play on that jet handoff earlier. Personal foul. Face mask, number 55 of the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's tough for Marshall. Right now, if you're Marshall, you have been neutralizing this offense. After the first two drives, uh, Louisiana's been pedestrian at best on offense, 5-3 and outs. 0 for 9 on third downs after those first two drives. Yeah, it's been ugly. We talk about the aggressiveness they want to show, but Michael Desermo really growing into that role of the play caller for the first time in his career here. Lewis to the outside. And it's Stevens, the TCU transfer across midfield. A gain of 13, a first down. Three catches now for John Stevens. Little tempo now in the final 20 seconds from Louisiana. 
Montrell Johnson trying to get away from Porter. He does, but Porter had help. Kobe Cumberlander with the TFL and Marshall really since those first two drives, they have been paying rent in the backfield. Porter has been outstanding today. We talked their undersized, but you see 55 and Green fired up to end this quarter heading to the fourth. The end of the third quarter. We got a good one in the Big Easy. Marshall with a five-point lead on Sunbelt champion Louisiana through three. You're watching Capital One Bowl Mania. Fourth quarter in New Orleans, R&L Carriers, New Orleans Bowl. Marshall leading Louisiana by five. The Ragin' Cajuns ride in on a 12-game win streak. It's second and long. Fourth quarter scoring, Louisiana plus 32 this year. Marshall in the red. Levi Lewis, designed quarterback run. T.J. Johnson sniffed it out. He slowed him up. Owen Porter finished it off. And that is 10 TFLs now for the Thundering Herd. They've lived behind the line of scrimmage all night. 10 tackles for loss, two sacks on the night. A lot of twist action up front here, knifing down. T.J. Johnson, one of the guys that's had to step up with all of the bodies missing. Three defensive linemen in that front out tonight. What is the adjustment Michael Desermo has to make in his play calling? It's got to be a little bit more misdirection and mixed in with what we saw work on the last drive. Go right at him up the gut. Lewis over the middle, off the hands of Michael Jefferson. It's fourth down. Well, the adjustment there is you got to catch it. The rare bit of drop back pass we've seen from Levi Lewis in this game. Puts it out in front of his receiver. And you know what, Anish? This offense has looked a little stagnant. We talked coming into this game. Outside of the service academies, few teams use more motion on offense than Louisiana. In fact, no teams use more motion on offense. 63% of their snaps. Willie Johnson returned to the last Reese Burns punt, 25 yards. Fair catch, made, and a flag comes in. That's going to be kick catch interference, and Johnson is down. And that's Jaron Wilson came in, and that was an easy call for the officials. And you hope Willie Johnson is okay. He is shaken up. And that's likely going to be an ejection for targeting on that play. I'd imagine they're going to take a look at that pretty soon. And Jaron Wilson's probably not going to be playing any more football today. And remember, if he's ejected in this game, then the first game of next season, he would miss the first half of that one. And that Marshall sideline, understandably fired up right now. That's cheap. You see clear, fair catch signal right there, and he still lays him out. That's dirty. The refs are going to have to get this one under control because if I'm on Marshall, I'm going out there looking for action. After and that this. is clear targeting. You have a defenseless player. Forcible contact to the neck and head area. Clear as day with a launch. Yeah, there's another personal foul coming on this drive, too, because the jersey's in green on that sideline right now. It's like a hornet's nest over there. Yeah, yeah, you can tell, and understandably fired up. Yep. Fired up in the booth right now. If you saw that happen to one of your teammates out there, that next drive, you're letting everyone know, especially as he's still Kick down right now. With targeting number 22 of the kicking team, 15 yard penalty. Previous plays under further review. Replay has to confirm all aspects of targeting. That shouldn't be hard, but let's call that what it was. That was a cheap shot. Yeah, that was a dirty play. And you're happy to see the young man from Marshall getting up after that one. Could have been a lot worse. Calling for the fair catch, but supposed to be protected through all that. And you see this Marshall sideline getting rallied now. Coach Huff's letting them know. They came after one of your own, so we're going to respond in kind. But you've got to do it between the whistles and make sure we don't cost ourselves yardage on this with a dumb penalty. There's a way to get, your, get back for your teammate. It's not getting more laundry on the field. There has been more than a few elements of chippiness tonight. Yeah, oh, this is, they're fired up in this one. Everyone understands the opportunity for Louisiana. We mentioned, you roll in here with 12 wins. You're playing in the Superdome. It matters a lot. 
And Marshall, they're trying to go out on a high note here. Their first year with Coach Huff, they lost two of their last three. It's also a chance for Marshall to show what they can do against the best team in the Sun Belt, a conference they will be joining no later than the fall of 2023. Everyone understands that Louisiana knows they got the new kids on the block showing up here. They think they're going to show them what's up. And instead, we get this. After further review, the ruling of targeting by number 22 is confirmed. Number 22 is disqualified. Uh, that's not a surprise. And I want to be clear. I don't know the young man, so I'm not going to call him a dirty player. That was a dirty play, yes. though. Yes. There is a distinction to be made there. But there's no reason for that to happen. And again, you see clear signal for the fair catch there. He eyes it up the whole way. Yeah, he sees that. He sees the signal. He makes the hit. And he gets to stay on the sideline with targeting. He's disqualified, not ejected, so he doesn't have to leave the field. But So Marshall will have the ball at the 33-yard line. Offensively, the thundering herd, it's really been a two-man show. It's been Ali on the ground. It's been Gamage in the receiving game. And I think you take a shot at Gamage now. A lot of aggressiveness on the field. See if you can get him to bite on that double move. Gamage lined up all the way at the top of this formation one-on-one. -on -one. Now, the one thing now, if you're the officials, you want to make sure this stays between the lines. And you got to watch out. You don't want this to turn like the military bowl did last year. And that's going to be something to watch even once you get to the end of the game. Wells looking for damage. And he's going to be marked for a loss of a yard. Garer was right there with him step for step. It's a great chess match by both teams there, honestly. Marshall trying to use cadence. Louisiana holding it and changing the picture at the last second. Getting the herd to throw on underneath, knowing they were going to have the guys rallying to tackle. Eight catches for damage to match a career high. Rashin Ali broke one tackle. And he's to the 35-yard line. Third down, eight to go. And you're seeing a lot of subs come on the field for Louisiana right now. That sideline's fired up now for the chance to respond. They got all their pass rushers on the D-line here. Remember, 17. Chauncey Manak, the guy to watch on the left side. Now this may be against Louisiana. Trey Amos on the far side, the cornerback. Look to jump and make contact. Offside, defense, number 21. Five-yard penalty, remains third down. No idea how that happens. You're watching the man. He's looking inside right here, trying to key on something else, looking in the backfield. He knew it right away. So third and eight, now a manageable third and three. You got Ali to that three receiver side right here. I think you're going to try and get a clear out, get the ball to him in that right side flat. Ali working the right side. McCaskill there. It's fourth down. That was Great. the left side he was working. Excuse me. And McCaskill blew that play up. Great job backdoor in that. McCaskill goes underneath James McGee, that left guard. They go just the opposite. They try and put all the receiver bodies on the right, get numbers on the left. Just an outstanding individual effort. So we thought that could have been a place for a momentum change. The penalty against Louisiana. Emotions high on the Marshall sideline. Instead, Louisiana gets the stop. Lefevre punts it away. Louisiana had blocked four kicks this year. It takes a raging Cajun bounce and downed at about the 32-yard line. Tempers flaring. Close game. Emotions running high. Marshall by five.
You're watching the Arndell Carriers New Orleans Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. First meeting between Marshall and Louisiana, two teams that will be conference foes in the near future. Levi Lewis, sixth year senior, playing his last game for the Ragin' Cajuns. Can he rally Louisiana or will this Marshall defense, which has been so stout and so good since the first two drives, continue to hold? 11.54 to go in regulation from the Caesars Superdome, the site of seven Super Bowls. Imani Bailey lowers the shoulder. Hits just feel like they're getting harder and harder as this game moves on. This game's cranked up. You can take advantage of that aggressiveness. You see Levi Lewis lined up in some of those pistol formations where he's got a chance to turn his back to the defense and set up a play action shot if they want to go back to it. Bailey across the 40. He's going to be marked a little short, third and one. Louisiana has not converted a third down since the first quarter, 0 for its last 10. A flag on the far side of the field. Offsides, number five of the defense lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty, second down. That's the kind of stuff we talk about, Anish, coming off of an emotional sequence, that ability to lock back in here for Tyquas, uh, Tyquas legs. And that's just a discipline moment right there. He's a D-tackle. He's lined up right over the football. And now, for Michael Desermo, some of the play calling has gotten a little bit outside of yourself. Go back to the inside run. It worked for you before. Lean on the big boys. There it is. It's Bailey. First down, Louisiana. Needed about a half yard. Got one and a half. You mentioned the hit, man. Brian Cavicante coming from the backside. Bailey's helmet came off, Number so by rule, play, he's got to go to the sideline for one play. Montrell Johnson, freshman of the year in the Sun Belt, enters at running back. Outside of Levi Lewis, the backs have had a hard time gaining traction against this Marshall defense. They have. This is the look, by the way. If you want to go for the play action shot, you got John Stevens singled up at the top. Lewis downfield. Incomplete. He wanted Stevens. It was a two man route. Ruling on the field is and an Stevens pass. just could not Second hold down. on. Impressive acrobatics on the catch. He had that ball almost between his legs for a couple of minutes on that, but never maintained possession of it here. That's clearly incomplete. See the ball just a little behind him. Yeah, never quite had it, never completed the catch. Good call. Incomplete, second and 10. Stevens, three catches today, had 10 on the season entering the game. There's the pistol look. Lewis keeps it. Ambushed. Another TFL. We've called Owen Porter's name quite a bit tonight. He's been the best defensive player on the field. This is all discipline on the backside here. He's that backside defender. He's got to keep leverage there. And that time sees the play going away, holds his edge, and knifes back upfield. And now third down. And part of the struggles for Louisiana on third downs tonight, it's what you saw in first and second down, not able to get enough traction. They've got no true drop, drop back passing game. It's been all play action and boots for them. Lewis pumps. Going deep downfield. He's got a receiver. It's caught. Michael Jefferson, the Alabama State transfer. Their big play guy, good for 48. And we see again, as they've done all night, Levi Lewis in this line getting up there. Want to operate with tempo. When you've struggled in the red zone, try and catch the defense slipping. Bailey lowers his head inside the 10. The red zone is where Louisiana has struggled. 
You see that slant and go straight up right there. We got a flag down on the field right now. Just an outstanding job by Levi Lewis dropping that in. Now the penalty marker right at the goal line. Louisiana tonight, four red zone possessions, one touchdown. Illegal substitution, 12 men in, on the defense. Five yard penalty remains first down. They're gassed on the defensive side right now. You saw a lot of hands on hips out there. We've talked about time of possession starting to add up all night. Almost 31 minutes against just 19 minutes and 55 seconds for Marshall. Lewis chasing the career passing yards record as well. Neil Johnson was motioning. And another flag. Full start on the offense. All 11 players not getting set prior to the snap. Five yard penalty remains first down. Okay, so there we go. Back to first down and 10. Anisha, I want to say that's the third procedure penalty on Louisiana down in the red zone. They've been shooting themselves in the foot constantly tonight. They need to be better in the red zone if they're going to win this game. You go back to their last seven red zone possessions, only two touchdowns. Lewis rolling to his left, chased, and he's got to throw it away. Marshall's blitzing the rollout every time. So what does that mean? We see a lot of these design bootlegs in college in the NFL. You send those ends straight up field, get right in his face, so he's got to make a decision quick. So what's the offensive counter if that's what you're anticipating? They hand the ball off the other way. You've got numbers on the other side. You've got multiple tight ends over there. You've got to start to have action off that. It's become too obvious a part of your early down passing. Neil Johnson, the big 6'4 tight end in the slot bottom of your screen. Errol Rodgers in motion. Up the middle, they hand it off. Montrell Johnson, homecoming for him. And he's to the four-yard line. It'll bring up third down. Louisiana can still get a first down. I was surprised they didn't go with a little tempo there. Would have been a perfect spot for it. You caught him after the big play there. That's a tired group on the other side. That being said, this is another spot. I go right back up the gut. There's no need to worry about this. If you don't get it here, you go for it on fourth down, don't you? Absolutely. Timeout. Louisiana. A timeout. This is the first time. By Michael Desermo. 8.25 to it. go. Third and two. Louisiana knocking on the door. The Arundel Carriers New Orleans Bowl is brought to you by Arundel Business Critical, providing guaranteed and expedited shipping solutions. A Marshall Bowl game record, 157 yards on the ground for Rasheen Ali to go along with three touchdowns. The Thundering Herd with a five-point lead. Louisiana with a third and two from the Marshall four. Levi Lewis, 216 through the air, 74 on the ground. Amani Bailey in the backfield. Bailey, touchdown, Louisiana. Taylor talked about it coming out of the halftime locker room. Go up the middle as Louisiana gets ready to go for two, but you shift motion all those guys out of there and then run it right up the gut behind the best part of your offensive line. Shane Velo, Cyrus Torrance, big experienced physical players that are your advantage tonight. 
Both all-conference linemen, and a no-brainer here to go for two. Lewis rolls to his left. Into the corner, incomplete. The conversion fails. Cambry was the target, but the touchdown run by Amani Bailey has given Louisiana the lead. From four yards out, the freshman from Denton, Texas. 22-21, Raging Cajuns. Sports Center follows the game. How about Indy stopping the Patriots' win streak? Full recap, highlights, reaction from that game. Tiger and his son Charlie take on the field, and Grambling State's Hugh Jackson joins Sports Center. If you haven't seen the videos of Tiger and his son, oh. the cadence, the mannerisms, like father, like son. The undeniable swag. The kids out there absolutely stunning all over that golf course. Nate Snyder sends it away. Here's Harrison from inside the five. They reverse it. It's Ahmed. They scored on a play like that earlier this year with Ali. We get a flag down. Against App State this year, they scored on a fake kick return reverse. He fakes the fake. He pretends to fake. Holding number 10 of the receivers. 10-yard penalty. First down. Let's check in with Taylor. This Marshall offensive line coming back onto the field after getting a firm talking to their offensive line coach, Eddie Morris. He kept using the word smart. He said, we have got to play smarter. They're also playing shorthanded as Kendrick Zartor has yet to return. He's on the sideline with a boot on his right ankle, guys. All right, thank you, Taylor. Yeah, this is an offensive line. Logan Osborne hurt most of the second half of the season. It's been a reshuffled unit. Ali works his way to the 17-yard line for a gain of three. 160 yards on the ground. The bowl record for this game is 201. Well, and if you're Louisiana on defense, you can sell out to stop him. Grant Wells has 80 passing yards with seven minutes and 45 seconds left in this game. They've been one dimensional. Wells looking for Gamage who makes the catch erased immediately. If you're Louisiana, you've got to know where the ball is going. It's either going to Ali or Gamage. Ali's got 19 carries for 160. Gamage has nine receptions. No other Marshall player has more than one catch. No, you love to play all that too high as we see some tempo from Marshall struggling to get set. On third and one. It's Ali. And he's going to be a little short. Fourth down. You're deep in your own territory. There's still a lot of time left. You've got three timeouts. Do you roll the dice or do you punt? Uh, your defense has played well enough for you to feel comfortable putting in this spot with this much time left. One point game. I think the score being what it is, even if Louisiana goes and scores a touchdown, you still have a chance. Touchdown, two point conversion. But we've seen Louisiana, they can eat up the clock. They did that early in the game with long drives. Lefevre's punt chases Guerra back. And the fair catch made inside his own 30, a 50 yard kick. Marshall will count on its defense once again. One point game. Louisiana 7-0 in one score games this season. 16-3 to go back to 2018. Marshall has suffered the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune quite a bit. 1-4 in the one score games. It's Louisiana ball up one in their own zone. From the 27-yard line, Levi Lewis will hand it off on first down. And it's Montrell Johnson for a short gain. Charlie Gray brought him down. 
Mike, you mentioned the rollouts with Lewis, all of them coming to the left. We were talking in the break. You said misdirection by Louisiana could get this Marshall defense off track. I, I just think with how much you've been rolling him out, there's a reverse waiting in there. Now, we know Owen Porter's been disciplined backside, but at some point you're going to have to take a chance if you're Louisiana once you get towards midfield. Lewis has time. Down the seam. Caught by Jefferson. his longest catch of the season. And we're going to see exactly what we've usually seen, them get into the line with tempo. But Levi Lewis, no rollout this time, just straight play action drop. O-line gives him just enough time, and what a perfectly thrown ball. Three catches, 106 yards for Jefferson. This is Johnson, the freshman of the year in the Sun Belt, powers his way. All the way to the six-yard line. And I wouldn't slow down now. You've got this defense on their heels. When they pin their ears back and go, they're great. But you've got them reeling right now. But they're taking time to substitute, so now Marshall will get a chance if they want to. First and goal. Lumpkin and Meagle the tight end. Johnson. Hit in the backfield by Charlie Gray. You can see what they were trying to do. They have all the numbers to the left, run it towards the right, but just too slow developing a play for now their 12th tackle for loss on the day. Another red zone opportunity for Louisiana, and here is where they just haven't been able to punctuate their drives consistently. We haven't seen much true zone read from Levi Lewis at quarterback to really stress an edge defender. Maybe this is the opportunity. Now there it is. They give it to Johnson straight ahead. And he's to the three yard line. It's third and goal. Given that it's just a one score game. You play this as four down territory, don't you? Absolutely. A one point game. And you play this right up the middle the way you finished the last drive. You see plenty of space there. Johnson, touchdown! The New Orleans native brings it home. A nearly identical play to the one they ran in the last drive. You see they extend that edge with two tight ends to that side. Get a great double team and ride the wave. A young man who played his high school ball at De La Salle, just 10 minutes away. Never got a chance to play in the Superdome, and the Louisiana coaches were telling us it is such a dream for so many of these in-state players to come here and play on this field. Most of them grew up rooting for the Saints, living and dying with the Saints, and a chance to play in this building, it means so much to them. It means so much to Montrell Johnson. Fans tune into the ESPN app for the Capital One post game immediately following the game. Montrell Johnson just punctuating a sensational rookie campaign. Mentioned the Sun Belt Freshman of the Year, just the third in school history for Louisiana. We know he had the big playability, but he's had the tough yards for this Louisiana offense. And we mentioned that decision to punt by Marshall, Anish. You're able to go out there, get a long drive, take about two, two and a half minutes off the clock, aided by that big play. And with that touchdown, Johnson tied the Louisiana freshman record with his 12th touchdown of the season. Twenty nine twenty one Marshall needs a touchdown and a two point conversion. Three fifty four to go. It's a tempo offense. Plenty of time and three timeouts. And the thundering herd have it at the twenty five yard line. Grant Wells today thirteen out of twenty. Rather, 14 out of 21, 86 yards, no touchdowns, 
An interception. He came into this game second in the conference in passing yards behind only Bailey Zappi, who today set the FBS single season record for passing yards. And certainly a potent test. Louisiana 14th nationally in passing efficiency on defense, but we mentioned ended up getting knocked out of that game. He's been cleared. He's fine medically. That's not the issue here, but certainly there seems to be an issue with confidence after that first interception of this game. Play clock down to two. Down to one. It's at zero. Delay of game. Delay of game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Now we see this happen off of a kickoff because the new rule that went into place a few years back, after the kickoff, the play clock starts at 25. And that's on the quarterback as well as the coach getting everyone ready to go, getting the play call in in time. First and 15, edge pressure. Well, steps up too high for Willie Johnson. And a flag at the back end and an injured Louisiana player at the 10 yard line. Chauncey Manack, slow to get up. Yeah, I think you got a little extra from James McGee, number 63, the left guard there. Manack was the closer in the Sun Belt Championship against App State. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 63 on the offense. That penalty will be enforced after this is the goal. Second down. Self inflicted wounds for Marshall on a critical drive. That's what Taylor mentioned. They were tasked with playing smarter football. We know they were fired up because of the way this game had transpired. Can't do that backed up in the shadow of your own end zone. Marshall needs to get to the 25 yard line. Wells looking for Willie Johnson. It's incomplete. Timeout for injury. Third and long. Another man down for Louisiana. Didn't really see what happened there. That's McCaskill. He got banged up earlier in this game. It has been a physical slugfest tonight. And McCaskill, the team's leading tackler, two-time all-Sun Belt selection. Been through a lot in his career. Last year, battled through a shoulder injury, had labrum surgery after the bowl game a year ago. Originally a Cincinnati recruit, didn't work out there. A young man who's matured a lot in his career, being helped off the field. Third and long. I had said Marshall needed the 25, they needed the 35. Now what do you do here offensively now? It's been Ali, it's been Gamage. Nobody else has really made plays for you offensively. No, and I think you got to try and get Gamage going towards the middle of the field here. It's the one area that's open for business. We've seen them go draw in this spot, but just with so much distance to cover, I think you got to give Wells a chance to win it for you downfield and go right in the middle where they just lost one of their best players. From the 10. Wells looking for a man incomplete, not even close. It's fourth down. Marshall's got all three timeouts. And really no choice here but to bring the punt team on and hope your defense can get one more stop. Yep, got to punt, play the timeout game here and try and give your offense a chance in a more normal field position set up here. Need a great punt. And if I'm Louisiana, don't get tempted to come after it down here. I know he's backed up, but you have a great opportunity for field position. Lefevre's punt, a short one. It takes a Marshall roll, 
And it's going to be downed at the 48-yard line. Tonight's Capital One player of the game, sixth-year senior Levi Lewis, 270 through the air, 74 on the ground, and he is 14 passing yards away from breaking Jake DeLome's career passing yardage record at Louisiana. But if his head coach had it his way, Louisiana probably doesn't attempt to pass the rest of the way. Nope, you could get a shot, maybe a short yardage situation if you really trust him. And we've seen, you give him time on the perimeter, pop it over the top, but you want your offensive line to go out, make sure that's not even a possibility, win you this game. Now they've relied on that old line all season. Imani Bailey through traffic into Marshall territory, a gain of four. Timeout. An offensive line Marshall. that featured three all-conference selections. Thirty seconds. One of the out. Max Mitchell, who graded out as the highest graded tackle in college football per pro football focus, is not playing today out with an injury. We get a timeout by Marshall. But they feel they have stars in waiting in Nathan Thomas and freshman Cameron Watts. This is a team that had a couple of guys drafted in 2020. Robert Hunt, a second round pick. Kevin Dotson was a fourth round pick. They have two offensive line coaches. You played O-line, you don't see that very often. No, you don't, but that shows you the attention to the position. They understand the value here, especially as they've built up this program really over the last four years. It's been about establishing that in the trenches. I work and get to vote for the Joe Moore Award, the best award for the best offensive line unit in college football. They were a semifinalist again this year. Bailey, he's got a first down and more inside the 40. Mention the Joe Moore Award semifinalists here. This is inside zone. This is up the gut. This is my better is better than your better. Driving your man off the ball, moving him from point A to point B against his will. Marshall not using a timeout. Louisiana will bleed the clock. The coach is telling us such an emphasis on developing O-linemen. They said they can find skilled guys in their recruiting area, especially Louisiana. But you got to develop the O-linemen. You got to find bodies. You got to look at someone who's 240, 250 and say, can he get to 300, 310, and 320? Bailey on the cutback. Slippery run across the 30, about a yard shy of the marker. It's second and one, and Louisiana can feel it. Now, this is a front right now exerting its will and dominance. Again, you go right back to it in the opposite direction. A great job stressing the edge by Imani Bailey. And then just cutting back underneath. They've taken the teeth out of this Marshall defense. And Marshall with no choice here but to watch the clock bleed. 2.05. Bailey's got the first down to the outside. First and goal, Louisiana. Stressing the edge on all these plays here. Been a remarkable job being the closer, Amani Bailey, on this drive. Would have liked him to go down in bounds on that play here. Under two minutes, so the clock stops when he goes out of bounds. The chains have reset for first and goal, but take good and make it even better by making the smart play at the end. One more time. And Bailey is down to the two yard line. We get a timeout by Marshall. 145 to go. The Marshall. one thing now, if you're the officials, the second time out of the half. given the temperature check out. in this game, as we get to the finish line, you've got to be an enforcer here too and make sure Nothing ugly happens because there have been some moments, there have been some chippiness. That's something to guard against here in the final minute. It's a proud defense that fought hard, and if yep. Louisiana gets in the end zone here, there's going to be some chirping. They've been letting them have it, letting them hear it all night up front. 
You're exactly right. The Zebra's got to control this one at the finish for what's been a really exciting, well-fought game by both sides. Now, Rasheen Ali, 160 yards, three touchdowns for Marshall. You'll hear his name a lot last year or next year. A star in Conference USA. A Marshall Bowl record for rushing yards. Now, Louisiana, they're going to miss Levi Lewis. They'll lose some veterans. Still a lot of talent coming back. Obviously, their head coach, Billy Napier, off to Gainesville. They'll have to put together a new staff. Napier took some coaches with him. But they have been an apex predator in the Sun Belt the last three years. Up the gut, touchdown, Amani Bailey. 500 yards of total offense for Louisiana, and Bailey providing the exclamation point at the end. Michael Desermo, first game as a head coach. 141 away from 1-0 as the head man at his alma mater. Starting to get exciting on that sideline here. Still 141 left in a timeout. Marshall's going to have to put this thing to the test. The extra point is good. 36-21. Before you say never, there was an FCS playoff game a few weeks ago between East Tennessee State and Kennesaw State. Similar situation. Had about a couple of minutes left. ETSU was down two touchdowns. They score quickly. Recover the onside kick. Score again, go for two. They end up winning the game. It's going to take that kind of miracle. But the team that plays here on Sundays in the biggest game in their franchise history, they did recover an onside kick. They did indeed, and that's why it almost makes sense. Marshall, let them score there on the goal line. You got a minute 45 and a timeout here. There was no sense fighting that fight down there, and now you've got to leave it up to that here. I think ESPN had the win probability in that ETSU win at 0.4%. So stranger things have happened. Right, we saw the Avengers come back from longer odds. 14,605, Anish. All you need's one. Oh, Anish in a major missed opportunity yeah, right if there. if he catches that ball out of bounds, you get it at the 35-yard line. You're taught in special teams, plant one foot out of bounds, plant one foot inbounds. I know he's running over there to get it. He's not a guy that usually fields the ball. But you got to be aware for the mortar kick there. You could have gotten extra yards well, for your team. Now the question is, did he? Because they're moving the chains up, so if... Nope, they're moving it up to the 25-yard line where it was fair caught. Yeah, if you catch that ball out of bounds, it is a dead ball because that ball and possession is never established in bounds, so it's the same as a kick out of bounds. Wells will throw. He's got Ahmed, who gets out of bounds near the 40-yard line, 135 to go. Marshall has one timeout. You're going to see two and three safeties back for Louisiana. Keep everything in front of you right now. And this is an opportunity for Chauncey Manack, who ended the Sun Belt Championship for them, to go ahead and try and put this thing on ice. Over the middle, nearly intercepted. Pedesclo had it, went right off of him. The receiver never saw it coming. No, it was Xavier Gaines again, a ball behind him by Wells. You got to keep these balls on the perimeter. Wells over the middle. It's clear they've gone away from that passing attack after that interception. It's got to stay on the outside right now, or else this game's going to be over before you've got a chance. Wells under pressure. The ball is out. Louisiana covers it up. Chris Moncrief recovered the fumble, and the Raging Cajuns are 122 away from putting the stamp on the greatest season in school history. Andre Jones goes up and under. 
on that play to strip it out. And guess who else was in there? Chauncey Manak. We saw him get the big forced fumble at the end of the App State game in the Sun Belt Championship. These guys know what to do when the game's on the line as pass rushers, obvious pass situations. And now for Louisiana, your 13th straight win to tie you with Cincinnati. And for Coach Dez, get your first win as the head man. For Louisiana, it was how they started and how they finished. A touchdown and a field goal on the first two drives as Lewis gets into victory formation. And then they scored a touchdown on their last three possessions, outscoring Marshall 20 to nothing in the fourth quarter. And a well-deserved bath for Michael Desermo, about to be 1-0 as a head coach. Leading Louisiana now into this next era with Billy Napier having moved on to Florida. And so much credit to the players on this staff. As we talked to some of the coaches, as we talked to Tim Leger, their offensive coordinator, he said, these guys just wanted to know what was up next. They got the news on Tuesday and were ready to go back to work on Wednesday. They have won a lot of football games, these players in this locker room, and that culture is what they wanted to preserve and keep intact with Michael DeZormo. DeZormo said this team stayed together more than any other team I've been a part of. 13 straight wins to close the season. The end of a season, the start of an era for Michael DeZormo. And Louisiana has just put together a 13-1 season, the best in program history. And for Levi Lewis, just an unbelievable leader as all this change goes on. Different guys out there. We talked about all the bodies that were missing on offense and on defense in the receiving core for Levi Lewis. And he stepped up and made some of the biggest shot plays of this game. Great deep passing, something he identified this offseason and wanted to work on, ends up being a reason why they're victorious today. Yeah, the two deep throws to Michael Jefferson changed this game. They set up Louisiana touchdowns. Marshall's Rasheen Ali was a star in his own right. But Louisiana closes with a 20 to nothing fourth quarter. The Ragin' Cajuns end the season with a 13th win. They'll take a 13 game win streak into 2022. Sports Center is next on ESPN. Welcome to the ESPN app post game presented by Capital One. The festivities down on the field are about to begin, but first, this message. Some things can't be tried at home. Where next? With Capital One, the possibilities are unlimited. Introducing Venture X, our new class of travel card. Earn 10x miles on hotels and 5x miles on flights booked through Capital One Travel, plus receive premium travel benefits like access to over 1,300 airport lounges. Find your where next with Venture X. What's in your wallet? 
We take a look at tonight's Capital One rewarding performance. The sixth year senior, Levi Lewis. What a way to close the book on an unbelievable career. 38 and four as a starter. He did it through the air. He did it with his legs. He wanted to work on the deep ball the last two years. It was the deep ball that came through down the stretch for Louisiana. He helped them shut the door when this team had stalled offensively in the red zone. You ended up with a quarterback 74 yards on the ground, was able to take the bite out of this Marshall defense that was getting behind the line of scrimmage. He sent it downfield and made the big plays when it mattered most. What a game we had here today. To think that these two schools are going to be conference rivals coming up here, I think that made this game even more exciting. And of course, a lot of storylines to follow. Louisiana trying to cap off the best season in the history of the school. Head coach getting his first ever win. Congratulations to you, coach. A lot of things to celebrate here this evening. Let's begin by passing off the trophy, the most important thing here this evening. To present the championship trophy, we have RNL Carriers. Uh, we welcome the executive director, Billy Ferranti, of the RNL Carriers, New Orleans Bull. I'll let you do the honors, Billy. Coach, congratulations on a great and first win. And with that, on behalf of the uh, executive committee of the New Orleans Bull and RNL Carriers, it's my pleasure to present you with the 2021 New Orleans Bowl Championship Trophy. Feel. It was. It kind of takes the wind out of you a little bit, but it feels great now. How would you describe the emotion that you're feeling right now? Relief a little bit. <laughs> you know, uh, I just we just as coaching staff we just wanted to do a really good job for these kids, and um, they deserve to go out with a bowl championship win. Um, they deserve to finish with 13 in a row, and um, I'm just really proud that of our staff and everybody involved that we were able to put this thing together and these guys went out there and played great. 13 wins. Why is this the group to put together a historic run like this? Because there's never been another group of kids, a team that cares about each other more than this team. You know, people say it all the time, but this team, they absolutely love each other. And uh, when it gets hard, they just get better. When you look back at this season, what will you remember the most? You know, I think you just remember the, the adversity, you know. You lose the first game of the season and then everybody says you lost it and you know, and you, you're not the same team. And the guys in our building, they just stuck together and just kept working through it. And um, you know, the, the things that make, it, that make it last are the things that you have to go through that are difficult. So that, that's the things I think you remember. And, Seeing these faces right now, it's uh, unbelievable. Thanks, Coach. Anish? Thank you, Taylor. To put that kind of stamp on this kind of season in this venue, it all ties together. Lafayette's only two hours from New Orleans. There's a lot of red at the Superdome for so many of the players that were from the state of Louisiana. To play in this building meant so much, and the way they finished tonight was awfully impressive. Uh, outstanding job. He mentioned these seniors, the players in this locker room that held it together through the change. They walk out of the season with a Sun Belt championship, and now a win to springboard them into Coach DeZormo's tenure as the head man around here. And now, of course, the MVP of the 2021 RNL Carriers Bowl, Billy Ferranti. I'll let you do the honors. Thank you. 
most valuable player of the 2021 RNL Cares New Orleans Bowl. Number one in your program, number one in your heart. 270 yards passing and a touchdown, 74 rushing yards. Levi Lewis. Levi, congratulations. Levi, you told me this week that you got really good at running and scrambling because in Little League, your offensive line wasn't very good. You can thank a great offensive line here now, but what do you have to say to what your team means to you and what you guys have done all year long? Well, I would say my team just being the world, you know, just us being locked in, um, the off season, all our phases, what we go through, um, we just build a great brotherhood. And what we go through, the unseen hours with our staff, everybody does extra work. I want to say thank you. And this right here means the world to us. You guys have put together history. So people will ask about the 2021 season. What will you tell them? Special team. It's a, it's a special team, people that got it done, players, everybody locked in. Just want to just big congratulations to all our people, you know, that's not getting these, award, these awards right now. I just want to say thank y'all. We talked about the culture and what makes Louisiana special. How would you describe the culture to people who aren't involved in it day in and day out? If you're not involved in it, you just wouldn't know. But if you go through identity phase with us, you, you will know. You will know. What does it mean to you to walk away as the MVP of this game? Um, I would, it don't really mean that much, but I want to give it to my old line. EB said two tutties. I told him he was going to get it. He got another one. This one here is for EB to my old line. Congratulations. Thank you. Anish? Thank you, Taylor. Levi Lewis, the star tonight for Louisiana. And what a career. Sixth year senior, 38 and 4 as a starting quarterback. Uh, an outstanding winner. You talk about the legacy he's going to leave behind. It's someone who understand and helped everyone involved in this core of players learn what it takes, learn what's required day in and day out. Like he mentioned, those unseen hours in order to be able to walk out and produce like this. No one in the country has a longer win streak than Louisiana. 13 straight wins for the Ragin' Cajuns to close 2021. They will again be a team to be reckoned with in 2022 in the Sun Belt. Marshall, in the very near future, no later than 2023, will join Louisiana in the Sun Belt Conference. I think we got a nice prologue for that rivalry tonight. Absolutely. And listen, they've got a lot to build on from this season. We know it maybe didn't finish the way they wanted here, but when you look at Coach Huff and what they built here, great recruiting class that they just brought in, signed a big time class here. I think the best in conference USA. They've got the guys to build on this after year one and what they were able to lay in place, the groundwork here. And thank you for watching the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl and the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl trophy presentation brought to you by Capital One. For Mike Golick Jr. and Taylor McGregor, I'm Anish Shroff. Good night and happy holidays.